We're here in a Tuesday night. Tuesday night. WCR Army, what's going on? I'm Ryan Clark, he's Matt Boone. We're going to be here for the next two hours on this fine Tuesday night. We're going to do a radio show, talk Man. Monday Night Raw from last night. I've been doing characters all day. Earlier, News, earlier, rumors. Earlier you are doing the gay guy, and yeah. then the uh, southern guy. Well, you know what, we're late, because... It's Tuesday night. Jacob's out there by himself. I didn't want to leave him out there because you know the second we go on air, he's going to get bored. He's going to start crying. It's going to turn into a train wreck. Mm -hmm. We're going to get frustrated. You know what I'm saying? It's it's so anyways. But uh, it's uh, been quite the week oh, for, for, for WWE. My nuts can't breathe. All right. It's been uh, quite a week for what? WWE and WWE. Vince McMahon and a lot of lot of uh, money being being lost. So... We're gonna talk about that. Uh, Fifty million dollars since WrestleMania. More on the way. Yeah. Uh, the network numbers are not where they want them to be. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm looking at your shirt on the I camera. I look good. I look fine. Oh, your shirt looks different than mine. Mine looks like a big blanket or something. What size shirt are you wearing? XL. Yeah, me too. I can't find a large. They're too fucking big. Well, anyways, anyways, quite so, a week uh, WWE. Yes, and, and Vince is uh, losing uh, a lot of money. Vince isn't necessarily upset about the amount of money that he's losing. I mean, of course, it's going to piss him off. But, you know, what the fuck, man? Of course he's upset. Things, what do you uh, mean he's not are, upset? But he's more upset with the press and the media basically, you know, turning this turning this into WWE going to go out of business. Uh, is this the end of WWE? We want management and it's, changed. And, yeah. Right, and it's, I mean... By no means is WWE going out of business. So by no means is WWE in financial trouble. It's nothing. It's not that deep. But a lot of money has been lost, and in, in you know the a network lot numbers. Of money. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it last week with uh, the network numbers, and we've been preaching this for months now, ever since the day after WrestleMania, when uh, that six hundred and sixty thousand subscriber, yeah, you know, it was figure, the TV deal that killed them. Yeah, well, and it did. Right. Well, yeah, the network numbers made the stock drop too, but the real plummet, right, was when because the, they thought, like I explained last week, the uh, they they knew they were going to take a big hit with the network, even if the numbers weren't what they wanted. Mm. They thought they would offset the losses for the network by gaining so much with their new TV rights deals. What are you looking at? Um, you don't have as much gel in your hair this oh, week. That's, I think and I'm that sure. pimple is still there from last week, but it's fading. It? It's fading. Feeding, yeah. But uh, anyways, but uh, no, they thought the uh, the new money they would get from the TV, the new the money they would get from the new TV deal, they thought that would offset the losses from the network, but right. they didn't get an, a, a substantial enough raise uh, in their new agreement with NBC Universal. So the network losses now are greater because they're well, not being they offset by another revenue stream. They wanted three hundred and something million for the TV deal, and they got like a buck ninety. Yeah, they were like hoping that. to double, or they were almost promising to they were going to double it. And that's why Possibly they've got three triple. different firms investigating them for, right. for uh, four. Now four. Four. That's right. Four. A fourth started. Uh, but yeah. So basically, for basically for lying. Right. You promised double the fucking TV, and you didn't do it. And they never really officially promised it. I don't think. But they really strongly hinted at it. Do you think? I mean, when the first firm came out and they sent out their press release, and if you notice, all the press releases, they put over their law firm, and it, uh, of course they're going to do it. I mean, why not? Why, so you think why not trying to get some uh, publicity? Why not off get of some publicity? Why not get some press by sending out these press releases and having all the media pick it up and then yeah, get more? It's a grabby headline, you know, right, right, right. be being investigated for fraud and this right. and that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's a But the first law firm comes out, okay, there's an investigation that's been open. And then the second one, you're like, all right, one or two, uh, I can understand that. <laughs> then you get a third, and then you get a fourth. And I'm sure that there's even more that we probably haven't heard about, uh, or there will be more coming out in so the you, I didn't in, even think in, of that. that, that you think it's the, that they're just looking at it as a media grab. Like, yeah. See, that didn't even cross my mind. I just thought since one did it, other people are like, well, fuck it, yeah, let's, let's you know, maybe there's something there. Kind no, of that makes sense. Maybe they are just yeah. Let's yeah. get some, some attention. But well, I yeah. guess a law firm would need. I was gonna say, would they even benefit from getting publicity? Well, do you th do you think WWE's fucked around? Do you think these these firms well, have a about, case or, or? It's not a matter they fucked around. Did they did they mislead their, uh, their Invest investors and, and shareholders? shareholders oh, right. By uh, right. by what they said what, in terms of the uh, what they expected. All right. 
when they negotiated the new deal with NBC. Do you think they? Do you think they did? I don't exactly remember the quotes, but I do remember after. I remember the impression in my brain after reading everything, hearing everything, seeing everything was that they're pretty damn confident, almost positive, very confident that they're right. getting double, possibly even triple, yeah. and then. What was it? Uh, NASCAR announced their new deal, which was like three or four times what the previous deal was. Mm -hmm. And WWE gets either equal or greater ratings than them on a consistent basis. A lot of basis. people compare NASCAR and WWE. Well, was that, they and there was the Major League Soccer deal, which was insane. The mm -hmm. soccer deal. The MLS deal. I think that's a deal uh, with Fox. I've been seeing Fox soccer Sports all over right? Fox. Regular Fox. I, okay. But uh, on the, on the either weekend, way, but yeah, yeah, those two deals mixed with what WWE said really got people that's why the stock got so high right because people are like yo if NASCAR, if got NASCAR that much, can do it if soccer, soccer got that much WWE absolutely. they're also live sports quote unquote right and that's DVR proof is what people think that's the belief in the industry at least uh -huh. which where it means the commercial advertisers are more attractive to a to a sponsor you know to a sponsor right. because they're like oh people aren't going to DVR and fast forward through our commercials because they Absolutely. watch this kind of programming live that was part of the reason there was talk about having Smackdown go live yes. on Tuesday nights as right. well because people are going to watch it live and that's like boom set if the live the tape thing does offset right. the DVR fast forwarding then fast that's forward that's, alright the production through. costs are greater but here's a ton of dough fucking make it live or exactly. you know, produce exactly. a live show God, I hope they didn't do that. If they, if they do live well, they SmackDown announced on the press release Friday Night SmackDown. So unless they, they do it live on Friday. They did announce it, and then they were so asked. they wouldn't do it the weekend schedule with their live events. Well, within the past week, they were asked straight up, are there plans to move SmackDown to Tuesdays, as you guys had talked about that when negotiating your television. that was before deal. the deal was announced, right? This was the past, within the past week, I think it was dead spin. Or somebody, or maybe yeah, that it was, was the before Huffington the deal Post. was announced. Yeah. Well, during the deal, they had during the deal they had said SmackDown. There's a possibility we would yes. move it. Well, the deal is complete now, and, it's and somebody asked about a week ago, and now that the deal is complete, yeah. are there still talks of moving SmackDown to Tuesday? No, no, no. Okay, now so if you want to say is there still talks of doing it live, you could say that, but it would have to be live on Friday because they clearly stated in the press release. That it's going to be Friday Night Smackdown. It'll be Friday Night All right, Friday. but they could go live on Friday if they wanted. But right. they didn't indicate that in any way. They didn't hint at it or allude to it. And, like I said, based on the schedule that WWE has, they wouldn't do a live TV every Friday and then Saturday and Sunday house shows the, straight into a live. Because that would be but Friday, live TV, Saturday house show, Sunday house show, Raw Monday. Right, but the question, they wouldn't do that. The question that they were asked flat out, I mean, they taped SmackDown they on Tuesday it? night. Yeah. So would they move it to but Tuesday nights and would they do it live? And WWE's response was simply... WWE SmackDown airs on Friday nights, so yeah. they're not going to do it. Okay, I didn't, I didn't hear about that, but as I remember the story, before the deal was announced, there was a lot of speculation that maybe to get more money out of the deal, they'll agree to move SmackDown to Tuesday, do it live, because mm -hmm. it's DVR proof, blah, blah, right. blah. Right. When they announced the new deal last week, and both companies sent out press releases, both press releases stated that SmackDown was going to be a Friday, Friday show, mm -hmm. so there's no moving it to Tuesday. No now, do they move it right. live? They could, but it would right. have to be Friday because they've already confirmed that it's a Friday show. And like you said, they're schedule. not going to do that with the live events and the house yeah, shows. And and Monday, it's, yeah, and Raw Monday. It's that, There'd that be would no be break. Insane. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It'd be ridiculous. Yeah. To, to and it'd be a lot something. of traveling involved there. Right, right. And a lot more cost, too, because main events airs on, on Tuesday, live on the network, and they produce... That's part of the reason that they... I didn't think of that. Main event They tape superstars before Raw, so basically you've got the whole setup there... Uh, so you tape it at you the can. COVID. You, you do double. If you shows. do Friday, set because uh, as things stand now, they do what Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. Then they're off Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. They work Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday, Sunday. Sometimes. sometimes it's, it's they get Sunday off. Right? Basically, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then they get Wednesday, Thursday off. Yeah. So if they switch this, no, not Friday. Normally or, Friday. Oh yeah, live yes. events Friday. Live events. I think start those till Saturday. Friday night. Friday, Friday they night? do a triple shoot on the weekend. Well, then they Friday wouldn't be able to do Friday Sunday. house shows anymore if they did it live on Friday SmackDown. That's true. So that would be the thing. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, but uh, so we'll get. We, I mean, we're going to talk more about that. What we'll, we'll, we'll do in hour uh, numero uno? We'll get through Monday Night Raw, then in hour number two. Do want to spend a little bit of time on uh, UFC one seventy three? Yeah. From uh, this past Saturday Good night. Show. Oh boy, Robbie Lawler, man. Don't sleep, and I know you don't sleep on Robbie. Not anymore. You are not you, anymore. Well, you're a big fan of Robbie, but you and I were talking. Yeah. Robbie looks the best he's ever looked in Easily. his entire career. Easily, right? Well, he's awesome. 
Yeah, he looks the best he's looked in his entire career. Now, as far as hype, when he first came in as the 21-year-old knockout kid, they're comparing him to Mike right. Tyson and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was really early on. Mm -hmm. So he had a lot of hype then. But now he's clearly the most talented he's ever been. Yeah. The closest to the top he's ever been. Yeah. By far. I had Dana White came out and said number one he's versus the number, number, one ranked. number six. He's uh, the number Matt one Brown. ranked. Yeah. And, and it'll Matt be Brown. him and Matt Brown yeah. at the uh, the next UFC on Fox. Big Fox. Hen and Brow looked like shit. Uh, TJ uh, Hen and Brow looked good. Dillashaw. TJ Dillashaw just looked that much better. Yeah. Hen and yeah. Brow was still fighting a good fight. Yeah. But TJ Dillashaw and what a lot of people are calling the biggest upset upset in UFC history. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people think maybe second biggest. Well, next he kicked to, his ass for next, five rounds. Next to Matt Sarah GSP, but that's yeah. the argument that people who don't pick that one, the Sarah GSP, they say, no, Dillashaw Brow is a bigger upset. Their argument is Sarah caught GSP with a lucky punch right. and knocked him out. Right. Right. First round. TJ Dillashaw whooped Burrell's ass for five rounds. And well, then, it was and stopped then, in the fifth, right. Well, he whooped his ass for five It wasn't like it was a lucky punch in the no, fifth round. No, I he know. was thoroughly stomping. Yeah. He won every yeah. single round. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then finished him. Yeah. And he was the same exact uh, underdog that, that Sarah was to GSP. They were both eight and a half to really? one underdogs. I didn't know that. So technically okay. speaking, based on odds, it is the biggest upset ever. Yeah. Uh, based on the way that outcome happened in the Sarah GSP outcome, wow. like I said. Wow. And then Daniel Cormier looked unbelievably amazing. Yes. Against uh, oh, Dan man. Henderson. I mean, I've never seen Henderson get thrown around like you a know, I like I, I love Henderson, man. I loved Henderson. And, and I told you going in, I said, listen, Henderson's my boy, but Cormier is just, he's so good. He's and, on another level. And then, you know, when I watched the fight, I, I, I told you after it was over, I said, I will never go against Cormier again. <laughs> I don't care who it is. It's I'll very similar to his fight with Cormier. Josh Barnett, who's a very, very respected in the industry heavyweight. Like, they say that's a legitimate heavyweight, yeah. Josh Barnett. And yeah. Cormier, in like his 10th fight ever, and like his third or fourth fight ever on the big stage, ever, yeah. fights Barnett. And I mean, fucking throw. I mean, remember he picked him up and fucking literally turned him upside down and slammed yeah. him on his head. Yeah. He yeah. did that to Henderson. He did that to Hendo too. too That's right? what I said. It's very comparable, yeah. comparable. And uh, I say Daniel Cormier is like a next level type of guy. There's a couple guys in the sport like Anderson Silva, John mm. Jones. They're GSP. They're just next level. They're right. head and shoulders Sorry. above everybody else. Sorry. <laughs> Cormier, I'm trying to ignore it. Cormier is above everybody else. I think he's that next level type of talent, which really makes me excited after this past Saturday night. Really yeah. makes me excited for a John Jones, Daniel Cormier fight. I think that'll be an amazing attraction. Ah, uh, Cormier and, um, and Bones. And Bones Jones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they gotta do Jones, Alexander Gustafson too, which is equally as exciting, because right. the way the first fight went down. Mm -hmm. I think Jones will make some adjustments, and I think he'll, he'll handle Gustafson. Yeah. Jones, yeah. Cormier... I might take uh, DC in that one. You may have to I after after DC the way one. DC looked uh, this past weekend on, on Saturday night. And like he said, Jones has never really. He's only ever been taken down twice ever. Yeah, Jones and both were against Gustafson. Before Gustafson, right. he had never been taken down in all those fights against all those killers: Vitor Belfort, Rampage, Rashad Evans, Shogun, that right. fucking murderous row of people he went through. I mean, he yeah. killed everybody. Yeah, right. But like all those guys, nobody ever took him down. Gustafson took him down twice. Yeah. And that was it. That's the only time he's ever taken down. Cormier points out, I can take him down whenever I want. Yeah. Because Cormier is an Olympic level wrestler. Absolutely. And he's bigger and he's, you know. Well, now what's the thing about Henderson? It'll be too, interesting they were to see Jones, if Cormier decides to take him down, right. how can Jones fight off of his back? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Jones is great right. standing, great on top. We've never seen him have to fight Cormier's off his back. Cormier's so big, though. You know what I mean? He gets on top and of you. He'd be hard to get yeah. off. That's what he's got great control. Problem. That's what Anderson had. Yeah. Anderson was on the bottom and you couldn't get, get him to fuck off yeah. him. And Anderson's a wrestler. He's, Anderson, Olymp he's another right. Olympic wrestler. So it was Olympic wrestler versus Olympic yeah. wrestler. Yeah. Now, yeah. Anderson's a much smaller, much more aged yeah. Olympic wrestler. What's he, 40, 43? 43, 43 yeah. no doubt. And he's um, not retiring, apparently. He's hey, listen. Moved down the middle, he said. Here's a, uh, a mm. good segue. Uh, MMA, boxing. How about last night? WWE oh. Hall of Famer, good old Jim Ross. Head to head with Raw. Head to head with Raw. Fox Sports 1. Wearing the headset. Oscar De La Hoya's uh, Golden Boy Promotions. Yeah. Jim a good Ross. Fight. Jim Ross. You know the fight, right? right? Uh, what was the main event? Rocky Juarez. Okay. You know Rocky Juarez. Heard the name, right? Of course. Yeah. Rocky Juarez versus uh, uh, Rene uh, uh, Alvarado, I think. Okay. Alvarado. All right. I didn't see the main event. Not but a major I, I fight, caught, but the two names. I caught the fight underneath that on the undercard. It was a guy he had, like, red hair. No, that was the fight after it. Okay, the it was fight a after bonus main event because they had time. Like a ginger-looking type guy, yeah, right? And he was, was in debut. there with a big black guy, right? 
And uh, so we put the video up on the, on the websites today, right? Oh, the thinking, cowboy something. I forget his name. All right. So I'm thinking, how's Jim Ross? Jim Ross doing boxing? Uh, you know, how's he gonna do? It's a whole different ball game. I mean, you would think boxing, the ring, and everything, but boxing and and pro pro wrestling is scripted entertainment where you're trying to sell storylines and you're it's trying two to completely different things. two completely different completely things. Completely different. Despite a live crowd in an arena with a ring, you know what I mean? Well, but two completely. Yeah. So on commentary, so Jim Ross is out there last night. And this is where I only watched about two minutes of the clip because I didn't have time today to go and watch the entire fight. Jim Ross was the fucking man That's what was last be. night on commentary, he, bro. He's a Hall of Fame caliber announcer, period. Yeah. Not a Hall of Fame caliber wrestling announcer. No, he's a Hall of Fame caliber television play-by-play he was man. Awesome. You give that guy a project, live TV, yeah. and say, we need you to call this and get it over. Put a headset blah, blah. on him, have He'll do his on. research. Yeah. He'll know, like, now here's the thing that I noticed when listening to him. It was all great right hand, great left hand, because you can tell if it's a right hand or a left right, hand. Right, right. But he wasn't doing all, all great straight cross, all great yeah. double jab yeah, yeah, yeah. setting up the left hook. He right, wasn't very right. proficient on the actual punches. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't know the subtleties between them. Or maybe he but the, the, the way that he would call but those, he would be like, he look was, at the left hand. Oh, we've yeah. got right hands left and yeah, right. Was, and he had a partner, and he let that guy do a lot yeah. of the technical stuff. But yeah, he got right. over the guy's stories. Like, I didn't know the guy's getting married. He's got a kid on the way. Yep. The guy you're talking about, the cowboy, the redhead. Yeah. Oh, he's got a kid on the way. His wife's been delivering any day now or expecting any day now. Uh, this is his debut. He's a uh, he will train with <laughs> trains with Ronnie Shields. Like he's telling you a story. A story, right? And, and then yeah, he'll get excited when the guys turn on the punches and really land on some big shots. He get he gets the passion voice. He going. really got into it. Yeah. Like look at the right oh hand. My oh, god. Uh, oh my god! Oh my god! He's almost on. Like he's very good. <laughs> Jim the guy is a pro. He is Period. a Hall of Famer. You let him. Yo, he here's some research. Here's some research. Yeah. Brand new venture boxing. Whole different ball game. Yeah. Here's your research. There's the headset. There's your desk. There's the ring. There's your camera. Put this shit over. I and he's he gonna do it. Killed it, man. And I only watched, like I said, two or three minutes, but I could just tell. Yeah. Well, that was that only a one round. round but, oh, it was one and a half rounds. Is that is that what That's it was? All, wait, God, the, 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 the two round. minutes I watched, so this dude was just whooping his ass. There. Actually, they were going back and forth. Yeah, they were going was, back and forth. One side, really. Did you you didn't stick around and watch the knockout the next round? No, that's when he got I real came fired in here. I he got real fired up. Oh my God, they're going to stop it in a second. Oh, hey. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Jim was awesome from what I saw on commentary last night. So hopefully it works out with him. And not only that, but you know that Jim's the type of guy where was in WWE for, what, 20 years? I don't know. Uh, I mean, he's been in the business like 40 so, and, you something, know, off crazy. and on. Every time they go to his hometown, they're ribbing him, they've got him out there, Vince McMahon with his pants down, you know, burying his face in Jim Ross's ass. Mm. They're mocking him with his Bell's palsy and their Dr. Dr. Heine. Heine and everything yeah. else, right? You know that's not going to happen in boxing. Mm. So it's, you know, he's going to, hopefully the boxing world works out for him where he can venture over right. there and, and, do something that he loves to do, yeah. which is commentate, but not have to. And Jim was always a professional, bro, where he would never say no to anything because he knew that it was sports entertainment and he knew that it was only for storyline. He was a pro. He was, a business. he was all about business. But, um, I mean, you say you know, he's got a new career in boxing. I don't think, I think that was a one time gimmick kind of a thing. I think they'll bring him back. I mean, maybe sporadically once or twice every, like, all right, three months from now, we'll do another one or so. I don't think he's going to, because that's a weekly show they do every Monday night, Go yeah. Boxing. Yeah. Uh, that was like a gimmick. Was it every Monday night? It's every Monday night on Fox oh, okay. Sports 1. No doubt. Since the uh, station debuted, it's been it's there. It's kind of a weird... It's like uh, Monday back in the day. night though. Monday well, night. Back in the day, they had I think it was Tuesday nights. The uh, USA uh, had uh, Tuesday night fights. Did they? Yeah. Before huh. Friday night fights on ESPN, it was Tuesday night fights on uh, USA. Back when like Sugar Ray Leonard was the man. I just think of MMA like UFC and boxing. I think of it like a Friday or a Saturday night type thing on the weekends. That's, that's how it, it shifts. All, all your boys get together. You, can, you know what I mean? But yeah. Anyways. I'd right. like to see the guy do UFC or MMA, Jim Ross. UFC, no doubt. It's Especially some sort with, of MMA, with UFC right. expanding the way they are and needing B team announcer, like Joe Rogan Goldberg can't fly to every goddamn. Like for example, this weekend, right. there's back to back shows. But I think John Anik and and the uh, the backup commentary Kenny team. Florian, I, I they got a bra, uh, European one, Dan Hardy and somebody. Bellator would be a great fit for uh, for Jim Ross. Maybe, I but I'm just saying, there's so many shows, and they got the the WWE Network version of UFC. You know, the Shit, Fight Pass. Man. 
He could do some uh, hosting say, on I, shit on there. Like, I, I say bring him into Bellator, bro. Or, or well, the fight pass, yeah, they, they they could do stuff with the network. I mean, he would be a he would be a great fit there. Yeah. But I would say, as, like, I want to see him. Like a Bellator would be you a great see fit. Him be the guy, not a, I, yeah, right, a C right. level. Well, Bellator would be a great fit just due to the fact, and not only that, but Bellator, TNA. That's what I was going to say. The, the advantage if you were to do a Bellator was yeah. maybe they would convince, Viacom would convince him, hey, can you do, do TNA, TNA well, special yeah, there? Ta- what do you think about uh, Taz? I can't. Let's, I like Taz. Taz is probably a good dude, but I like I, Taz. I, I can't stand his commentary. You don't, right? I, when, back when he would do SmackDown, when I would watch SmackDown, yeah. when Heyman was writing it and all that, um. When it did the brain extension in the beginning, it was yeah. him and Michael Cole, and I always thought that was funny. Oh, I can't. Like, he would try and act, he would play, play stupid and like uh, use the word I, wrong. I, like, oh, did I say that right, Mike or I'm, Cole? I'm yeah. trying to think. Mike Tenay and, and Jim Ross. I don't think like Mike Tenay is like a history buff where he studies up and he's, he's and a historian. They they wouldn't mix. They wouldn't mesh. No, mesh that, well. no, they're both play by play guys. You right, need a play by play and a color, and then a color. You need exactly. Jerry Lawler, Taz. You need a personality to go with the the, the guy calling. Correct. Correct. And you've got two play by play guys that yeah. wouldn't. Uh, some well, of yeah, them. like Jr. Well, if it's Tanay and Taz, Taz Tanay does it's the outline of the picture. Taz colors it in. He's the play by play. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's exactly what it is. Exactly, dude. Uh, but I, I don't know. I just can't stand uh, Taz on kind of thing. Anyways, um, so here we go. Let's get into it. We uh, we got about a half an hour. We're going to run down Monday Night Raw from last night. I got to tell you, man, the go-home show for Payback this Sunday night, it wasn't good, man. It wasn't good. Raw wasn't good, bro. No, it was not no, Raw wasn't I, good. I, I, usually <laughs> when, we, when it's especially a go-home show or the, the post-pay-per-view show, we always say... Or no, go home show. We always yeah. say, look at it two ways. Was it an entertaining three-hour television show? When you turn your remote on, you sat there for three hours, you turned it off when it was over, were you like, yeah, that was a good show, that was fun. No. I had a good time watching it. No, and, it or, good. and or, you look at it from the other perspective, which was, you turn it on, you sit there for three hours, you turn it off. When you're done, are you sitting there saying, man, after watching that, I can't wait for payback this Sunday. No. I say, it a, I say a definitive like no in both categories this past Monday night. It was I was not entertained for three hours, and I'm not any more uh, eager to buy payback this Sunday. No. Neither one. It was not a, uh, not, the, I mean, when, when the show ended last night, not only that, but for the main event segment, the crowd was dead. You said that was, they seemed, uh, you know. In retrospect, I guess the crowd, I mean, that's what everybody's saying, too, especially the feedback I've heard from people who were in the building. They're like, no, it wasn't that loud. It sounded loud to me, loud enough, you know, like a decent, not a high, particularly high crowd, but it didn't sound like a particularly hand, you know, sitting on their hands kind of crowd either. And, and, and what surprised me was they were kind of a different crowd. Like, they were cheering for John Cena. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, uh, they were. Boo and Wyatt cheering Cena. Now, part of that was because Wyatt incorporated Jerry Lawler, who's from Tennessee. That's the thing, right. right, right, right. But they were booing and che- booing him and cheering when he would mention Cena before he started, before he turned his attention to Lawler, they were. They were, uh... I'm trying they, to kill time for you here, Mr. I know you are. I know you are. I'm working on getting our beer and, right. and, you know, everything else for tomorrow. Um, beer and smokes. Um, no, but it, it didn't make sense to, to have Bray do what he did to Lawler, like you said, with Lawler being from Tennessee. Well, in, it did in if they were turning him over as a heel, which clearly they were trying to do. They were right. trying to, like, because he's been getting people cheering and singing along with them and all that. But it, almost, uh, it was almost like they were going to do a, a slow baby face turn with I Bray. think they are. Yeah. But I think they want, for the and match, they want the heat to be, yeah. you know, you know. We want, That's true. We want the people to hope Cena win, which in Chicago, fucking forget about I know, about I know. Chica- Sunday, yeah. Chicago is going to be all over Cena. They're going to shit Cena. all over Cena. All over Cena. And there's going to be a lot of, people will remember that CM Punk's gone, too. I heard uh, CM Punk's coming back. Uh, payback to in Chicago, Sunday night. He's not coming. What are you going to get everybody joking. worked up for, I'm man? joking. It's not fucking nice. <laughs> the, call, the caller last week, he said, yeah, you said that... Uh, you remember I did that on CM April Punk Fool's with Raw, right? Oh, when I was in Chicago, I fooled everybody. Oh, with the wrestling answer yeah. post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or no, that wasn't uh, Raw. It was, uh, I said he was going to be at the Hall of Fame. That's what it was. Yeah. It made less sense. I said, yeah, it would it be believable. Good. Like, oh, he's going to attend the Hall of Fame. Oh, he's not returning, but he'll be yeah. at the Hall yeah. of Fame. Yeah. No, there are uh, no plans for uh, CM Punk to come back at uh, Payback this uh, Sunday. We're going to give our uh, Payback predictions here in just a little bit. You have the well. card? Um, we can pull one up. I got it on the... Uh, 
All right, so here we go. Uh, let's get these plugs out of the way, then we'll get into it. Monday Night Raw from last night. Alan Numero Dose, we're going to be talking the WWE Network numbers, the stock, the amount of money that Vince McMahon and WWE have lost over the past, actually, since WrestleMania. Yes. Uh, we'll be talking about that and uh, all the other news and rumors over the course of the past week. Total Divas renewed for a third season. Rosa Mendez is going to join the cast. A uh, bunch of stuff from the past week. Nothing bigger breaking, but there's been a, uh, a lot of news. So, Daniel Bryan, injury update. When's he going to be yeah. back? Are they going to strip him of the title? Here we go. The official home, the official website of WZR TV Tuesdays, WZRonline.com. We are also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZR Army, YouTube.com slash WZR Archive. And we are on Twitter as well. All you got to do is go to WZRonline.com, top navigation bar, there's a social media tab. It's a drop-down menu. It's got all the links to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. WZRonline.com, the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays. Speaking of WZRonline.com, we've got a live chat room on and in progress. Oh, right now, WZRonline.com. Oh, motherfucking.com. Slash chat. WZRonline.com. Slash chat. WZRonline.com. Slash chat. Get in there. Lots and lots of people in there, as always, tonight. I believe. Big drink when we do going on in the chat room. Like. When we do a plug, I don't know the rules, and I don't want to know the rules. I just found out one of them. MMA talk makes you have to drink if we do MMA talk. And then, like, yeah, like you said, I think plugs mean you have to drink. I think when I do dot com, dot com, I think they have to drink. Say it again. Dot com, dot com, one more dot time. com, dot com, dot com, dot com. We could be wrong. I could be wrong. If we're right, they're getting know. fucking. Or maybe it's right every now. time I plug. Yeah, look. Maybe it's every time. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's every time I do wzronline.com, wzronline.com, or plugs in general, or something yeah. like that. I don't know what Anytime it is. I don't something. want to know. I don't want to know. More because, fun this right. Yeah. But anyways, uh, get in there. We've got lots and lots of people in the chat room as always. By the way, site traffic. Uh, man. They said people are gonna. Brian K. Clem, I can't say the last name. Says people are going to get alcohol poisoning tonight. <laughs> Yeah. We got them all drinking on Tuesday nights here, man. Hey, listen, you know? we're drinking what's good. Makes for a better show, yes, right? it does. Much more fun. Much more loose. Loosey goose. All right, so, let's get into it, bro. We got 30, 29 minutes from right now. They're literally all drinking, too. Look at them. Monday night. They they all do. Every Tuesday yeah. night, man. It, it makes for a better show when everybody drinks some beers and, you know what I mean? All right, children. Oh. All right, here we go, bro. Monday Night Raw from last night. So they kicked it off. Knoxville, Tennessee. Previous week. By the way, their uh, WWE SmackDown is being taped tonight from uh, Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Scott Hall and Ric Flair are scheduled to be there. Well, Ric Flair is scheduled to be there. Scott Hall was invited, I believe. Scott confirmed that he was going to be there. Well, he will be there. He'll be in the area. He'll be there to shoot stuff for the WWE Network. Correct. But Correct. I don't think it's confirmed that it'll be on SmackDown. No, no, neither of them are supposed to be I on SmackDown. I think Ric Flair's supposed to be on SmackDown. Ric Flair lives in the area. Yeah. Yeah, he currently resides in Atlanta, Georgia, so there was talk that he was going to be backstage and up here at the show. I would think they would have hyped up that Ric Flair's going to be on I was told he'll be on the show, but uh, it wasn't okay. confirmed when I was told that. And right. Scott Hall, like I said, he was confirmed to be there to shoot some Scott, shit. Scott won't be on the show. He's shooting some shit for the network. Right. Uh, and then Triple H publicly invited him, I guess, to SmackDown. Triple H publicly invited him, and Scott responded on Twitter and said, I'm honored to be invited to uh, Tuesday SmackDown taping. I wonder how they would even incorporate him yet if they were to use him on TV. Well, they'll do, like you said. Maybe the panel, the pre-show panel. For, oh, Smackdown. for SmackDown? On yeah, the network. there you go. I think we'll, we'll see Rick. I think Rick would be He'll would be doing that. More than likely. That's what Flair will be doing. Right. Plus, Flair think... will be involved at uh, NXT TakeOver this Thursday, which we have to talk about. That's right. He's actually got a big role. Um, it's going to be Charlotte against uh, Natalia. Yeah. And uh, Bret Hart is going to be in the corner of Natalia and uh, 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 
Ric Flair is going to be in the corner of yes. his daughter, uh, Charlotte. And that's so. the, Diva, the NXT Divas Championship. The finals right. of the tournament for right. the vacant title. They needed to get the title they took switched it off over with Paige. Yeah. Right, absolutely. So we know that Charlotte is going to wind up winning the, uh, the, the or title. They could have the title one defended on uh, Raw and SmackDown shit. I mean, that's I, true. I don't that's think true. they will, but that's one way to go. Well, I, I was thinking they would, they would do something like that with Bo Dallas and uh, Adrian Neville. Um, Man, that's Tyson Kidd and Adrian. Or Tyson Kidd and uh, yeah. Adrian Neville. What's the uh, the the one with uh, Bo Dallas? The winner, the winner of the match or the loser of the match has to leave NXT forever. That happened on the TV, I believe. Not the takeover. Oh, was that TV? I believe that was okay. the last TV before Takeover or right. the next something. But well, I, I think, think that, that involved TV. Bo Dallas. It was. Bo, yeah. Dallas. Bo Dallas lost the loser to leave town. That's okay. Basically. All right, that's what it was. Or he's right. going to be. We might have just spoiled it for people, but yeah. So here we go, bro. You ready? Um, born Monday ready. Night Raw bore you. <laughs> oh, <I laughs> Is that what born you ready? Oh, born ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, it will bore me. So the previous week <laughs> in uh, in London, Stephanie McMahon said, "I'm not going to strip Daniel Bryan of the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, but I want him to come to Raw next week in Knoxville, Tennessee. Do the right thing. Do the right thing and surrender yeah, the WWE the length, World Heavyweight." Forfeit. Forfeit, relinquish, Give it away. whatever you want to say. So Stephanie comes out and uh, she's out there with Triple H, right? Authority comes to the ring and uh, she's basically, where's Daniel at? Uh, at some point tonight, yeah. she wants Daniel Bryan to come out and do what we just talked about and what she said last week to uh, relinquish the WWE World Heavyweight Title. She said that. Uh, Oh, th- this is where... I mean, that was basically Stephanie's promo. I want to see Daniel Bryan at some point tonight. Triple H then grabbed the microphone, and things kind of switched into... I thought Bryan came into this. He evolution. didn't come into this. He didn't come out until later. Not in this segment at all. Not in the opening segment okay. at all. Daniel okay. didn't, uh, didn't show up until later. But, uh, so Triple H takes the microphone and kind of transitions mm-hmm. uh, things over to uh, Evolution and uh, The Shield. Talks about uh, legends and those who perish... Uh, saying Evolution are the legends, mm-hmm. and the Shield is going to perish this Sunday at the uh, perish WWE. Mean? Perish means uh, to basically be eliminated, be done, uh, gone. Um, cease to exist. Like dead. Cease to exist, yes. Yeah, like dead. Um, well, you got them. All right. All right. Uh, so <laughs> basically, it's it, if it's, you didn't, you would have kicked my ass during the break. What the fuck you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's hype. Uh, the, it's gonna be a no holds barred <laughs> match at uh, the elimination match. Elimination, no, no holds barred elimination, elimination, elimination yeah. style match at WWE Payback, and uh, he says that tonight the Shield has a choice. And that was oh, yeah, okay. and they're either going to sign contracts or. They're going to perish yeah. at the hands of the shield. So the we've evolution. got a contract but, uh, uh, related to the hands that. of evolution. Yes, but um, th- I heard a rumor that there's a possibility because it's an elimination match. They might have Ambrose and Rollins. Okay, buddy. Yeah, little <laughs> gas. They might have Ambrose and Rollins get eliminated early, leaving Reigns by himself, yeah. and Reigns takes out all of evolution by Dominates. himself. Dominates. Right? Although I don't know how that sets up Reigns Triple H at SummerSlam if he can beat Triple H and Batista in Orton in one night. And that would be in one match. that would be, I guess, in WWE's eyes, the official start of, his of the push. main yeah, event. How do you promote it, like for Roman? You know, like I could see. Let's say, put it this way: if they don't do what, what I just said, and it's just somehow Shield wins the, evol- the elimination match. Without without eliminating everybody, Reigns leaving Reigns by himself, they just win two to three, two to one, whatever, instead of one to three. Sure. Um, if they do that, then the way they could promote Reigns Triple H going to SummerSlam is Triple H could Triple H could justify it by saying, "Yeah, uh, the Shield beat Evolution, but that was three on three. Me and you one on one, where I don't have to carry dead weight like the animal and the viper. You can't beat me man to man. But but right, if he's able to like beat, that. if they eliminate Ambrose and Rollins." Leave Reigns to fight all of evolution by himself, uh. and not only does he beat Triple H, but he beats Batista and Orton in the same match, three falls in a row. Mm-hmm. Then it's hard to go on to SummerSlam and say, oh, "I know you beat me and him and him all in the same match by yourself, but you can't beat me." When right. Of well, course I can. I already, like I already right. did, and I beat two of your boys at the same time. Right. It'd be hard right. to justify it. Oh. We're forgetting a uh, major part. No, we didn't of, get to uh, it. Yeah, yeah, the Triple opening. H keeps talking about Paris. Keeps talking, and then it goes back to Stephanie. Stephanie. Stephanie yeah. McMahon grabs the uh, the microphone, and uh, 
she's pissed off that last week, um, Brad Maddox, who is the Raw general manager, who knew? I don't even remember, yeah. Brad Maddox, Raw, it's kind of like they use them here and there. Whatever they whatever need. Whatever they need yeah, something, yeah. you know what I mean? But, Which uh, is goofy so, because they've got the authority, <laughs> who are basically the GMs. They're the ones who make the matches every week and this and that. So what the fuck does the GM do? Right. Right. But unless they need something like, all right, we need an excuse to make the shield commentate. Go get my coffee or something. Yeah, but they don't, know, don't even see that. Segments same, yeah. like that. Right, right. Unfortunately, um, what does he do? So, anyways, uh, so who was on commentary? It was uh, Ambrose and uh, Reigns were, were on commentary. Yeah, the, for uh, Rollins and Batista. Or Rollins and uh, Orton. Or who the fuck for was For Rollins it? and uh, Orton. Orton. Rollins and Orton. Was it Orton um, or Batista? Uh, I, it was, I think it I, I think it was Batista. The chat would let us know, but yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, so Ambrose and Rollins or Ambrose and Reigns were for the Rollins Batista match uh, oh, yeah. last week. So okay, um, so Maddox, uh, she calls Maddox well, out. She said, Maddox who, comes out. "Who the fuck led?" Or no, not who, because I guess they had explained it on commentary last week. They knew. She right. said, "What is Maddox doing?" We clearly stated we don't want anybody except officials at ringside for the Rollins right. Batista match. Right. And then all of a sudden, Shields on commentary, who said that they, or why did Maddox let them do that? Because they said on commentary, Maddox is the one that let. So why, who, we didn't give Maddox permission to do that. Why did he do that? You know, get your ass out here right so now. So Maddox comes out, and his explanation is, well, I was beaten, oh. and I was forced. I had no choice. Uh, yeah. They beat me up, and, and they demanded it. Yeah, they, they demanded that uh, they be on commentary. So Stephanie disagreed. And, uh, no, no, she said, I understand. I understand that you did what you had to do. You got your ass whooped. You had to do it. You were just I hope you understand that we have to do what we have to do now. Which this was is where Kane comes out, uh, and Kane winds up destroying him. Chokes uh, tombstone, chokes him, and tombstone then pile. Stephanie. Boy, they brought back the uh, the tombstone pile. Yeah, guys, right. Huh? It yeah. was banned for a while. Now it's back. Yeah, but, now uh, it's back. Stephanie and then, uh, gets in his face afterwards and says, "You are fired." Not bad. Well, got a good Vince, bro. He's got a good Vince. You're fired. Anyway, you're fired. <laughs> it's harder than it sounds. You're doing good. Um, that, was, that wasn't bad. Mm. Wasn't bad. Um, I'm no so, Ryan Clark when it comes to Vince oh, McMahon impression. Stop it. No, no, no. So Maddox is out. It's better than you now, everything else, though. Now, what happens to Maddox? I mean, poor Maddox. I mean, well, this guy. A, who cares what happens to him? But B, it looks like we're getting Hulk Hogan as a raw GM here. You know, they took a poll on dot .com yes, today, and uh, Hogan is way out in the lead as of uh, as of last year. And it's got to be a baby face. There was some discussion of Paul Heyman and this and that. It's got to be a baby face because, like I mentioned, you have the authority who has authority, no pun intended. Why do we, why you do need, we you have need a baby face that can argue with them. They make this yeah, match. Hogan right. says, you're no, right. no, 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 I'm the GM, and I say this. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, I'm the owner and the CEO, and I say this, and then they have a struggle you're right. You're right. back and forth, and that could even set up Vince if you want down the road. Yeah, yeah, know. kind of come but back there's a lot of options. in the middle. Yeah. Well, that would be cool if Vince were to come back and get in the middle of Hogan, yes. Stephanie, and Triple H. I mean, yeah, think you're about, the GM, think you're about the those CEO, four. you're one of the first right. owners. I'm the fucking guy. I'm the man. So you I'm, guys can argue all want what I say goes. I mean, I doubt that they're not going that way. We haven't heard anything like that. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I'm pretty sure, not pretty sure, I'm guessing that that was done, the firing Maddox and all that, to to get Hogan there. They've got him under contract. Right, right. What the fuck else are you going to do? Wrestle. Right. He's right. a great ambassador and all that, but you, if you're paying him, you might as well get some mileage out of him and put him on TV. Right, right, right. That's something well, you can do. So we'll see what happens uh, with, uh, you know, the Raw General Manager storyline. Or, I mean... A good comment. If you want to read chat comments, uh, um, Hogan is GM from uh, R. Kelly, aka Cyber Devil. Uh, hmm. As far as Hogan as GM is concerned, I think TNA already did that. Laugh my ass off. I, I mean, listen. You can say what you want, and you, you you see companies do it all the. I don't care whether you're WWE or TNA. Both companies. I figured you'd go. And there's right. not there's <laughs> not one company that does it more than the others. WWE has stolen or used ideas from TNA, and TNA has used ideas everybody from steals WWE. From everybody. everybody steals from everybody. It's not not te- just in wrestling either. In, in, the, in, in, in every yeah. industry, man. Rappers in every, steal from rappers. Right, right. 
so it's not well TNA always copies WWE WWE copies TNA too both companies do it I mean TNA's angle right now with Eric Young that is a complete ripoff of what WWE yeah. has done with Daniel Bryan but there's been examples in the past and can't I don't know what any was it like there. an Aces in the Eights and the Shield? What was the thing? That Aces in the Eights and the Shield was was there was one something where that TNA did that, that we were saying WWE's clearly copying fucking TNA's thing. Here. Uh, there's been numerous times yeah. in the past. Was a recent, I'd have to go back. Not recent, but like five, six months ago, it was like a big one that we kept talking about. I yeah, can't remember there's uh, there's been numerous times in the past where both companies, it, it, you know, uh, like you said, everybody does it. WWE, TNA, rappers, uh, companies, uh, uh, all. Of them. Um, all right, so Brad Maddox, he's out, and uh, we'll see what happens with uh, the general manager situation. Rob Van Dam, the time that music hits, man, that and then he comes out. Love that. They music. get a pop too. He always gets a pop against uh, Cesaro. They um, refuse to do anything with him because he's got that part-time deal, so they won't do shit with him. Yeah, it's the same as like when Jericho I came know, back. Like, I oh, know. we'll have you work with Fandango at, at right. Like, God damn, you get Jericho to come back. Why don't you do something with? I, well, him? I, I, if oh, he's not gonna be around. All right, well, make somebody. You're not making Fandango. I guess that was the plan yeah. with Fandango originally. If if you're only gonna be here for three months at a time, they're not gonna put a title on you, and they're not gonna give you this massive push. They're not gonna the give top. you a real big angle, even. They're not gonna, gonna give you any. Yeah. Right, right, because you're coming and going. Uh, so while they're there, the you should use them to. Put somebody over. Yes. Not just put somebody over. Put somebody over that actually means something. Like I was using the Fandango Chris Jericho example. Oh, stupid. But at the yeah. time they were really going to try and do something with Fandango. Right. So right. in hindsight it looks retarded, but at the time it made sense. Like right. this is the guy we're going to try and do something with. Right. Having him be Jericho Mania is a good way to start. Absolutely. And then they just stopped doing. Jericho it. wasn't happy about that. Jericho came out no. in an interview. He wanted to work with back that year, I think. Was that who it was? I Ryback? think it was Ryback. Cause that was the year was Ryback it? feed me more on the feed streak. Right, right, even right. Even talking right. and maybe beating Punk and ending that long three hundred whatever day streak of Punk's yeah. better rain hell in the cell. Right. I mean, he was a big guy at that time. Dude, speaking of Ryback and and this kind of relates to Ryback a little bit. Bill Goldberg appears on Jim Ross's podcast. Did you listen to it? And, and no, I have yeah, it. And, and no, you said you listened to a few minutes. Had to turn it off. A few minutes of it. Yeah. I put it up on Facebook. I listened to a few minutes. Goldberg I starts you talking about <laughs> dude. Goldberg starts talking about football. Well, if, if if the money's right, I'll oh, come back yeah. for another man. He's talking about. I want to see my. I, I want. Well, not my always. Son. Is the money got to be right. If the money's right and the idea's right and the plans are right, maybe I'll think about it. Possibly, wow. perhaps. This motherfucker. Sort of, and, 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 and then he and then he ties his son into. Well, I'd like to see my little son. You get know, to see he, he gets to star. see me wrestle one more match or something, dude. This dude's ego it's is crazy. so out of fucking control. I crazy. think he's got one. I mean, Hogan's up there. Uh, Bret Hart's up there. The, Bret Hart's up there. Yeah, yeah. I would say Hogan, Bret, and Goldberg in no particular order. I'm trying to think of other uh, guys, but those are clearly three of the biggest egos. Those are three of the biggest egos where it's all about the money. They don't give a fuck about the fans. No, none of them. You can't none do that. Them. They don't Brett care. Brett does care about the fans. Maybe Brett. Brett cares uh, okay. a lot about it. Okay. He cares too much about the fans. Maybe maybe Brett. But he, he takes himself probably, very serious. He takes hero himself to fans. very serious. But Goldberg and, and Hogan. We can actually talk to Vince Russo about that a lot. Can we? Brett Hart here with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, Goldberg. When we talked to Vince Russo, I thought you'd plug it. Right? Uh, I think June 3rd. I've got, he sent an, yeah. another well, I mean, uh, blog out to me. mention it if you're going to hype it up. Yeah, it Russo's uh, scheduled huh. to come here the first or second week of uh, of June uh, we're still working out the date as he's got a couple interviews coming up and he wants to kind of spread them out. Um, he didn't want to whore himself out all at once. Right, right. <laughs> it's, the right well, it's the right, you yeah. know, doesn't want to whore himself out. Whore you know? himself out. But, um, yes. But anyways, um, so it'll be the uh, the first or second week here of uh, June. Forward to it. Vince Russo. Vince Russo. That's, yeah. a, big, uh, that's yeah. a big interview. It's awesome. I mean, we've had bigger names, but I'm just saying, it's been a while since we've had like a really good interview on the show. So you listen to Goldberg on Ross's listen, yeah, podcast. The, the whole thing. You got through it. It comes out as soon as WZR, WZR is over every week. I listen to it. Oh, yeah. But this week I think he's got Michelle Beadle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can give two fucks about that. So, so I'll, I'll skip that one. Was it just the entire podcast was just it was ego the whole time. about himself? The whole time. All about himself. Yeah, when he was talking about his football in the beginning, ego. Talking about wrestling in his early days, ego. His WWE run, ego. I don't think they used me. Oh, this and that. Like just I, I can't stand Very, very cocky. I can't 
Damn yeah, he's a breath. cocky dude. All right, we had uh, so uh, Cesaro beat uh, RVD with the uh, German suplex, I believe, uh, into a pin. Um, he was distracted by somebody. Who was it? Bad News Barrett came out and uh, said that today was officially the first day of summer, but he's got some bad news. I thought Heyman was uh, up on the apron. It isn't. It's not. It's he was wrong. Memorial Day is supposed to be the official start of yeah. summer. I think we talked about that last week. We did, didn't we? Yeah. But uh, here's the deal with Wade Barrett, right? Okay. Wade Barrett is a heel. Everybody knows he's a heel. But when the music hits and he comes out and the first words out of it, I'm afraid I've got some bad news, right? Everybody pops for that. He's a heel that people like. He's a heel that people yeah. like. And I feel like they got to, if they want him to be a true heel, they've got to tweak that somehow. Maybe they don't. Maybe they just... Push him as a heel, have him do his thing, and if it gets over, it gets over. But let's yeah. let it get over, get over, get over, and then turn him so that it's huge. Right, turn right. Face. Something like that. Yeah. Well, let, how people, they let people want it and anticipate it and then give they it say, to I'm them. A, I'm a, well, he'd say, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for a guy like Ryback or something. I'm going to come down there and kick your ass or something like that. That would get him over. Exactly. Or, I'm afraid I've got some good news. Yeah, fine. Think of it here, like Triple H. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Right, you know Some, I mean? something like yeah. that. Might come out. They say it to the right guy. Like, oh, oh shit, right. there right. he is. All right, we had uh, oh Sheamus. Sheamus came out here attacked too him and uh, attacked him and yeah. uh, hit the bro kick. The previous uh, week he uh, embarrassed yeah. him with the handshake and the thing, but that was Cesaro. We did this too. Right, because we're right. doing right. Cesaro Sheamus at Payback, U.S. title. Sh- Cesaro and Sheamus. Yeah, right. and then they're right. doing Barrett RVD at uh. So Sheamus is still. A baby face, Cesaro's exactly. the heel, yeah. right? Yeah, it's kind of a slow turn, I guess. With and like both are team. opposite. People want to boo Sheamus; they want to cheer Cesaro. Right, so it's right. It's kind of backwards, but the uh, the Divas match was uh, Summer Rae and uh, Eva Marie. They've been doing an angle on Total Divas where nobody likes Summer on no, Total Divas. Every, everybody hates Summer. You know, she's a slut and she. Backstabs everybody yeah. and, and everything else. So Eva Marie, the last episode I watched was Eva Marie was her only ally, if you will. Two weeks and ago. something happened where they were in a match and uh, Eva kept going her hand, wouldn't her hand tag out. In, right. Summer wouldn't tag her because she she thought she sucked. Right, so right, she right. wouldn't tag her. In. So anyway, so they're building off that the whole uh, the whole angle there. Um, and then we had uh, God, there was nothing with. Um, they had a oh, Eva they did have Summer. Layla. They had Fandango okay. and Layla come out and interrupt the match, and Eva right. was distracted. Or no, Summer was distracted. Eva rolled her up. Fandango. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. That wasn't the only Divas match though, because Alicia Fox do a fit at some point in the show. Right, 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 right. Uh, who she work? Uh, Paige. She beat Paige, right? She did beat. She that was Paige's the uh, champion, her first, first loss. loss. Right, yeah. right. On Raw, we'll get to that here. Or no, didn't they beat? No, did they beat her in London? No, this is they because they. I remember them. Wait, no, they beat her in London. They what, at, at either last week or this week they specifically mentioned that this is Paige's first loss. Well, I, they either beat her in London or they did something stupid with her in London because I remember us saying, "Wow, the first time she works in her hometown, they pull the fucking let's fuck with the person in their hometown thing." I think she lost to Alicia last week. Yeah, because Alicia lost to Emma last night. That's what it was. That's what it was. So Emma was beat, out there. Uh, Paige, right, right. and that was Paige's first loss last week. Last night was Emma's first loss. You're right. TV, I think. Has Emma lost yet? I think Emma's boop, lost. Boop, 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 yeah, boop, I think boop, Emma's. Okay, well, then that would be one lost. of her first few losses. Emma hasn't had that many singles matches on Raw, though. No, She's a lot been of out there with sense. Santino Morello yeah, yeah, and everything yeah, yeah. else. Um, El Torito and Drew McIntyre. This was pathetic, uh, man. There was it a was time where Drew McIntyre was Vince's favorite child and getting this. I think Drew McIntyre. He's jobbing for mid. Bro. <laughs> Drew McIntyre, he's got the he's got a voice, man. Something about the voice, man, where I think this dude, if they wanted to turn this dude, he's one of those guys where I think, and you know who's another one? And you guys are going to call me crazy, but when they were doing the angle with The Miz, uh, got a year, two years ago, time flies, I don't know how long it was, probably two years ago at this point, 
Alex Riley, bro. Alex Riley. I saw so much potential I you about in this dude where he was great on the microphone. You guys see him on the pre show panel. Great on the pre show. I wasn't watching him. Isn't he good? But he's really good on the pre show. He's good, so man. So was Matt Stryker, and they fired Stryker. I know. I, I know. thought Stryker was great. I saw so much potential so, during the Miz uh, Alex Riley feud with Alex Riley, and then all of a sudden. Well, they uh, were a tag team, right? And then they broke up or something. Uh. They, they were a tag team, and then they broke yeah, up, yeah. and then they did the singles feud between the two of them. And then Alex Riley, uh, the reports that came out on him were somebody ribbed him backstage. There was talk that John he Cena, out of Cena, John Cena yeah. pu- pu- pulled a rib on him backstage. And Alex Riley, being a rookie guy, when somebody pulls a rib on you, you suck it up. You're the new guy in town. You suck it up, and you... Basically, say oh, you I'm got me. Really testing you. See, you got me. See how you handle. It. Are you right? Cool? You, right. You, know. you got me good, man. Uh, you know, I'll get you back next time. It's something like that. You don't even say that because or you're get him back. You could. You, I mean, maybe yeah. not when you're a rookie, but you don't go tattle. Yeah. So anyway, he went. He went and tattled the management and got pissed off and blew up at John Cena. Well, the the full story never came out, but something out. Alex Riley threw a little hissy fit because somebody ribbed them backstage. You were a rookie. You need to suck it up. And ever since then. Well, God, you're talking about the Miz. You remember when Miz first came in? They shit in his bag and everything else, right? uh, Maybe, I don't know. But I know Chris Benoit kicked him out of the locker room. Yeah? And wouldn't let him be in the locker room. He had to dress in a closet. (laughs) Did he? Yeah, for a while, too. For a while. Right, right. You gotta suck it up, man. You're the rookie. You're the new guy in 10. Uh You know, people are gonna fuck with you. It happens, you know? Um, But anyways, so then we, uh, so, uh, so what are, oh, with uh, Drew McIntyre, though, I think Drew McIntyre... On the microphone, I think the dude. Well, if, they were to, if they were to, if they were to, well, if they were to completely change this dude's gimmick and, yeah. and let him speak, let him wrestle, and really have a push, I think he'd be something. I don't think he would. I you see. Don't think I've so? heard a lot of people say they see talent promising him, and I, I, mean, I do, I do. But uh, I see it with Barrett. I don't see it with uh, McIntyre. But um, yeah. the big gimmick in this match was they yanked Torito's tail off. Oh my god! Yeah. I mean, first of all, McIntyre job for Torito. He jobbed for a midget in a mask. Right. Uh, right. But then after the match, they attacked him, and either Hornswoggle or somebody yanked Torito's tail off his ass, and that was the big crescendo. That's what they they ripped him. the tail yeah, off. They the ripped his tail off. So that's what happened there. And then we let me tell you something, and I'll give you a little history. I don't know if you know this or not, but I know everything. Any dog or any cat. Okay, the tail, the reason that they have a tail is that's their spine, that's their back. So if you were to cut off a dog's tail, and the only dog that you can do it to is a Springer Spaniel. Those are the ones that have the nubs. They have the nubs, because you're supposed to cut them off Mm. because it fucks with them later in life. But the tail of a dog, like if you you try to bend it or something like that, uh, it would break their back and the dog would never be able to walk again. So by ripping the tail, off the fucking, what is it, a bull? So if you're ever being attacked, uh, pit bull, or no. Rip the fucking bull. tip. Rip if you're ever being attacked by a dog, by a pit bull, rip, rip his tail. Really? Or bend his tail in half, and it won't be able to walk. I didn't know that. Because that's the spine. It would paralyze him. It would paralyze him. Oh, right. Shit, I didn't because know that's that. the spine, and it, that's... See that that's video of that dog attacking that person, and the cat comes Yeah, they put the dog ass. down. That was awesome. Hero cat. The cat came and whooped his Hero motherfucking cat. ass. But anyway, so <laughs> when the tail got ripped off the bull, <laughs> the bull, at that point would have been immobilized. It wouldn't have been able to move. Yeah. It would have been paralyzed. So, but they ripped the tail off the ball. Yeah. So, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because shit happens. Like, for example, I mean, earlier this week, this big fat bitch we know next door oh. got in some trouble. Same bitch that uh, you almost fucking got into a fight with on. Good. What do we got? We got four minutes before we go to the break. Let me give him a quick story. A good story real quick. to go on to the break. I give him a quick story. So uh, yesterday, and then we'll come back. We'll finish up Monday Night Raw. You guys like stories, right? We can He's about mix to mix it up a little bit. He's going to go on a Ryan we, Clark rant. But uh, so on. anyway, we we've had this problem with this next door neighbor. We talked about it on the fat before. nasty bitch. Fuck yeah, She turned us in for but, uh, a dog. We almost had to get rid of our uh, dog. She's just a horrible. She got a big fight with your sister a bunch of times. You, I had to hold you back once. Remember, we told that story and. I, Put you back in the house. I would never hit a woman. No, I know. Man, I love to very much in her face, face talking shit. Yeah, calling her uh, fat and this and that. But anyways, so uh, so uh, this woman basically, our neighbor. He, okay, she subleases her apartment uh, to to random people, Sub-leases, right? Yeah. So these people come in, and it's like every six months or so, a new person moves into the apartment, and the reason for that is because. 
she sucks them in and she gets them to you know sign the contract and then and she's real nice for the first couple of weeks right and then after like a month or so everybody's like wow this fucking bitch i can't stand her but they're locked into the contract so they can't get out and they have to pay well well that too and didn't she overcharge him I, she overcharges yeah. them and so she some makes people them that like they can't get in the park because they can't pass a credit check or a background check right so right. to have somebody say well no you can stay here it's stay gonna here. cost right, you a little right. more since you can't legally get into an apartment so they know they got you if she they pays can, they can charge you let's say rent seven hundred dollars a month they can say well no you're gonna pay nine hundred if you want to live here because they know well you can't get an apartment you can't pass a credit check if, if you want to live somewhere you give me seven hundred a month to go fuck yourself if she pays a grand a month over there i don't know what she pays but yeah. if she pays a grand a month okay uh, she would basically charge this woman, hey, seven hundred dollars, and I'll cover the yeah. other three. Of course, she's not going to tell her that. But of course not. You know I mean? So, anyways, these people they come and they go and they come and they go. There's always people moving out of there, right? Well, yesterday, uh, see all the cop cars out front, right? And I hear motion in the hallway. Well, it turns out that uh, they got an argument. The the new tenant, you mm -hmm. know, like the tenth person that's lived there oh. since you know we've been here. Uh, but uh, I guess. She was holding her stuff hostage because she didn't pay for the last two months rent. Yeah, she hadn't been paying her rent. So she her. wouldn't give her the shit back. So the woman called. Uh, she this, she had know, all, the, the woman, the woman that was staying with the, our neighbor. Yes, hadn't been paying her rent. So the the, the neighbor said, "All right, well, because the woman was, leaving, I'm not giving you your shit. I'm not back. giving you your shit back because she had all her stuff, her belongings. So right, says, right. Well, I'm not giving it to you until you pay the rent you owe me." No, fuck that. You legally have to let me in and get my stuff. Long story short. So she cops calls can't. the cops, right? And the cops say, the cops are telling her, listen, you have to let her, you can't hold her stuff for ransom. She's on the lease, right? Uh, you're subletting um, to to her. You have to let her go in and, and get what her What kind of lease is that? This, don't, you I don't, get a, don't you have to get the contract notarized? She's like, doing it illegally. This say, is all illegal over there. Even the contract, the contract can't be binding because... For it to be legitimate, it would have to be notarized by the apartment complex, right? Yeah, something I don't know, dude. I but whatever. So they're going back and forth. This went on for an hour and a half. Finally, the police sergeant, like the the head man in charge, the big of the dog. Police, yeah. he comes in and he's got this attitude. He's telling her, "Shut up." He says, "If you don't shut up," he says, "You are five seconds away from obstruction of justice, and I will arrest you." He says, "Get in your house right now." Get in your house. He says, I'm not going to tell you again. They went back and forth. Dude, and before I that guy came, the there was a dude, a little nerdy kid with glasses oh, that kept nerdy dude. pestering the cops. This, this Legally, dude. by this Article D, dude. Section yeah. Yeah. Column, column 3, this you have to let me in. This nerdy dude, he oh. says, he says, well, Article 3, Section 5 in the Constitution says that you have to answer me. Yeah. He says, officer, sir, I am telling you. It is your legal obligation. Line 12, you must respond to my Line 12 on on document B says you must. Super <laughs> nerd, bro. Right. Super nerd. This guy was like the law yeah. student of all law students, right? And the officer's telling him, I'm not talking to you. I'm well, not you talking to you. You went out there at Get first. Out. Like, so no, everybody was standing at the door trying to fucking snoop and shit. And I said, fuck that. I opened the door, I walked right the fuck out there. And I go and just stand right around him and see what's going on. And the kid kept doing what you're saying to the cop, and the cop kept turning and said, Dude, shut I'm up. I'm not going to tell you I'm again. I'm not telling you again. Shut your mouth. You're shut getting on my up. nerve. Bum so, anyway, the, this, this whole thing led to the lady got her stuff back, right? And then she says, Well, I'm missing my TV, my flat screen TV, my 40 something inch flat screen. Yeah. And the woman over there, of course, she says, oh, You didn't have a 40 inch. She says, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. You know why? Because you went and pawned it off at the local porn yeah, store. You're not gonna pay me rent. Because, I'm selling your TV. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna pay the rent. I'm gonna pawn your TV off. So now the cops are telling them that they've got to go to court. Everything else. There's, there's a paper shot of that too. If she pawned that TV <coughs> and signed it, the, the well, every time you walk into a porn pawn shop, Have you, you got anything? Yeah, you, you got to sign Social Security and this. They got to copy thing. your ID. Everything. Well, anyway, so yeah, I saw the woman out there yesterday. The woman that I my sister's right? boyfriend went to jail because he stole a ring from his parents. A ring that was worth thousands of dollars. You got nine hundred dollars for it at a pawn shop. And if you know anything about pawn shops, that means it was probably like a five thousand, ten thousand dollar yeah, ring. Yeah. If they gave you that much. Right. Right. But they got the security cameras. They got his oh, signature, yeah. and oh, he, ended yeah. up, he ended up going to jail because his father yeah. turned him in. His father yeah. turned him in, knew the pawn shops in the area, and said, "All right, well, let's check the records uh. of the pawn shops." The cops did. Found the slip. Found the, uh, the yeah. security camera. And paper they trail right back to him. Went to jail. 
Yeah. For like six months. I hope she goes to jail. It was, jail. A felony. It was over five hundred dollars, so it was anyway. a felony charge. That TV's probably over five hundred bucks. That's probably a felony too. I saw the woman out there. Yeah, the lady, the next door neighbor that I don't like. Right? And she's out. Hey, train. She's better call Saul. Sorry, I had to yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the uh, Breaking Bad. Yeah, I saw her, and she looked at me, and I gave. Your sister was doing that too. I gave her the biggest. Your sister was fucking fuck laughing right in her face. Ah, you yeah. bitch! I just oh, such God. great justice. Oh, oh man, such great karma. Karma's a bitch, it's a man. Bi- and a big Karma's fat bitch in her case. Bi- a yeah. big fat bitch in her case. Yeah. Fuck the bitch. We're coming back. We're finishing up Monday Night Raw from last night. Taking your live phone yes, calls as are. well. Also doing rapid fire. Tell them how they can submit rapid well, it's fire. It's very easy. They can go to facebook.com slash. Ryan Clark WZR, that's Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Get on over there. Well, the top post will ask you for your questions and comments for the rapid fire segment. If we get to an hour number two, submit them now. We'll answer them in a couple minutes. Facebook.com slash Keep typing Ryan Clark WZR. Get on over. You're listening to WZR TV Tuesdays. Sure. With Matt Boone. Me? Ryan Clark. Him. Be back. Bo. Right after this. Uh, Piece of shit, man. <laughs> you know, this guy, during a commercial break, I got a <laughs> fan twisting, right? And I got the, uh, I got the, the protection piece on the, the front, the yeah. cover off of it. So he takes my finger and he wants to no. jab it into the fan, try to rip you my finger You did it 800 off. times yourself, but he was doing it like a pussy way that doesn't, I said, no, hold on, do it like this. He said, all right, I'll do it like that. So he does it, but he does it a pussy way. I said, hold on, watch. Let it spin, let it spin. Give me your hand. No, 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 don't do that. And all of a sudden, he ain't tough guy. Then, he says, where's my lighter? Well, I don't I don't have my lighter. I said, come on, bro, we ain't got time for this. Let's let's go. Yeah. Is it 914? Walk out, walk out the door, and he slams the door. I got a full thing, a full cup of beer. Right. Well, slams the, the door behind first, then I slam the door. Then, I come around... And the son of a bitch locks the door on me, so I gotta walk around to the to the other door. You're a real piece of shit. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? What's going on, boy? Oh man, I can't. Uh, no, you can keep it on. Hold, hold on one second, man. Yeah, it's not bad. All right, what's on your mind, man? What you want to talk about? What's going on, man? I got two questions. All right, shoot. Number one, um, I missed Raw last night. I want to know what happened with Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, uh, Daniel Bryan, they uh, basically told he basically told them I'm not uh, I'm not gonna relinquish the uh, title, and they postponed it until uh, WWE Payback this Sunday. Basically, he's got six days until Payback, and uh, they're gonna do a reshoot of what they did on Raw. Uh, you come to payback and you give us the title. So they're basically, you know, they're trying to get a better read on on how long he's going to be out of action with the uh, the next surgery. So they're kind of taking it on a week by week yeah. basis. See how to long see, his recovery takes. See how long the recovery time will be, and whether or not they're going to have to strip him of the WWE World Heavyweight Title. So take it on a week to week basis, and then uh, they'll know more. I'm guessing. I, I mean, my guess is they thought that they would know more by last night's Raw, and they're going to give it another six days at Payback, see where they're at at that point, and uh, and and take it from there. But you know, it's kind of it's a week to week thing right now until they uh, they they get a better idea. Anything uh, anything going on regarding CM Punk? CM Punk, uh, you know, every uh, WWE Paybacks in uh, Chicago this Sunday night. So a lot of people, you know, you always get those people that come out of the woodshed and and say, oh well, they're back in Chicago. Yeah. No new news. No new He's news on uh, CM Punk. He's not going to be a payback. Yeah. Uh, I no, honestly, the fans will cheer for him a lot. Absolutely, yeah. they're in Chicago on Sunday night for the uh, Payback pay per view. But I mean, listen, I think CM Punk right now. Uh, that's you know the the story's in the past. It's a done deal. He's happy he's where he is right now. Clearly not coming back anytime soon. I mean, if he's, you look at the pictures, he's getting of him, married. And if you look and at the pictures of him at the Tough Mudder event. He's getting fat. 
Like, he's not even in shape if he wanted to come back right now. I don't know if he's getting fat, no, but yeah, he's put on a little bit no, of weight. He's not right. fat. He's getting fat. Yeah, he's right. getting pudgy and shit. That's he's, not wrestling shape to be jiggling around with a yeah. gut and everything. I, I, I think, uh, it's, uh, I mean, listen, never say never in, in pro wrestling. And I think eventually we'll probably see CM Punk show up somewhere, whether it be back in WWE, even Ring of Honor. You know, I don't, I don't know be, that he... They it, would, could, it could be five years from now. Right. CM Punk will Ten. be back eventually. But I, I, I think he's going to take the next, you know, at least the year I think he's going to take yeah. an extended break and uh, you know people are saying that that he's happy right now so he's retired. it seems to me like yeah I mean you get burnt out uh, being on the road that long and you, you made know, a lot of money the last few shows. years right. yeah. and he's good with his money man people say that he's got he's money saved up and uh, yeah. you know he's, he's in good shape so I think he's I think he's happy right now I think he's uh, you know he's going to get married to AJ uh, next month in uh, in the month of, of June yeah hold off on that for a second uh, in the month of uh, uh, of June, and uh, you know we'll see uh, we'll see where you know we'll see what the future holds for uh, CM Punk. But no, he's not going to be a payback, and I don't expect him back anytime soon. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's going on? Yeah, just two quick questions. Yeah. Um, first one, since you're on CM Punk, um, do you think we'll ever see him maybe in the MMA or something? Since he's friends with some MMA people, you know, the Jewish side, maybe like Bobby Lashley did or uh, Batista probably did. You're asking and, uh, what are the chances last, uh, CM Punk would uh, would fight MMA? Yeah, I mean, you think he'll give it a, give it a oh. shot because he has a lot of friends there and everything, and, you know, like, people gave it a shot, uh, Bobby Lashley or what have you, well, like Ryan said, give it a try. Like Ryan said, you never say never, but never. He's not fighting MMA. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see okay. CM Punk in, uh, in MMA no. or, or UFC, no, man. No, it wouldn't. It would shock me, but I could see maybe... Him doing something like Abu Dhabi, like a submission grappling tournament, where there's no strikes and it's not a right. real fight, it's a submission grappling contest, because right. he's very into jiu-jitsu. But even that, I would be very surprised, like I said, to see happen. All right, and uh, one last question. What's up with the, uh, the question you get all the time? What's up with the news on Sting? Is he WWE at all, or did he just retire from wrestling as a, you know... It's a good anyway. question. Uh, he's asking about Sting to uh, to WWE. Ah, that's uh, a good question. We, had to look, we, we were going to talk about that here uh, at some point in our numero dos. Talk about it right now, though, since you uh, you brought it up. Thanks uh, for the call, by the way. A lot of, uh, lot of right, conflicting man. reports on, uh, on Sting to WWE. I mean, I, I can tell you that there are very few people, and it's kind of like the CM Punk situation when he left WWE. There were very few people that knew... What exactly was going on? Why three. CM Punk? There were Vince McMahon, uh, Triple H was involved, uh, and probably Stephanie. Well, would, and CM would, Punk would have been, and, and CM Punk yeah, himself. No, not but, um, I heard it was Vince and Punk, and maybe Triple H had some. And Triple H, you know, yeah. basically it was a one-on-one meeting. From what I heard, Vince. that's kind of the same scenario with uh, with the Sting to WWE rumors. Really. Um, there, there are very. There are very few people that know what is going on with Sting and WWE as the contract negotiations are going to take place between Sting himself, obviously, and a guy like Vince McMahon or a guy like Triple H. Um, and with that being said, I mean, Sting cut a video, there was a promo at some you know convention um, during WrestleMania 30 weekend well, where he said his new favorite number was 31, this, that, and yeah, the other thing. Alluding to WrestleMania 31. No, but there's also, I mean, they're working on a Sting DVD that they're bringing out. Right. Uh, he appeared in the network for the Ultimate Warrior stuff, some other stuff. So, there's people, it's not, let's put it this way. It's as secretive, if that's the word you want to use, or as quietly kept as uh, the CM Punk thing. In terms of, is he officially going to sign and come in and work for the company as an active member of the roster? That's an active the member of the roster. The only people who know that is Sting, right. and that's it. As right. of right now, until or if he signs. But the company, I mean, the the, the marketing department knows, you know, get ready to start promoting this thing DVD. The network people know, yo, promote that he's on this special about Warrior. The the talent, the executives know, like, all right, we're trying to negotiate a contract, get a contract with these terms. and uh, you know. So there's people that know stuff, whereas with the punk thing, nobody knows shit. The, the the fact that he's that he's you know working with WWE right now in a capacity of you know doing stuff for DVDs doing stuff yeah, for the WWE network I mean don't think for one second that WWE hasn't had talks with him about you know possibly coming in and working at least one match well, you know whether it be at WrestleMania yeah. 
Um, uh, of course, they've talked about it. Um, now, whether the deal, I mean, there's going to be a deal signed for network projects. There's going to be a deal signed for DVD projects. Yeah. There's going to be a deal signed for an active member of the WWE We know that deals have been completed as we've seen them on the network, and we've yeah. seen them where he's working on DVDs. So we know that the deals for those have been completed. Now, as he's far got as got more of active, a relationship with the company than ever, but as far as... As far as an active member of the WWE roster, that remains to be seen. I mean, I think we're going to see it. I think they're going to do, you know, we've seen them on the network. They're going to do a DVD when that DVD is released. I don't think, I think we it's have the summer. The, the, is it they're the doing that in the summer? Brothers of Destruction DVD around the same time. We're, I think it's like August. But um, We're going to see Sting in WWE eventually. As far as the contract, there's very few people that know uh, what the deal is. And I know was, we put it up on the website that Sting is very close to signing with WWE. No. I even, uh, a couple days after WrestleMania, I had put up that, hey, it's Sting official. had signed. Yeah. Uh, it was official that Sting had signed with WWE. I'm a man. I can admit, you if, you, if, if, if you make a mistake, you yeah. go out and you issue a retraction on the websites, and that's well, we, what I did. You man up and you admit your mistake. I did that on the website. Um, but as this of, is what as I thought about why he says I interrupt him a lot. You just had like four different topics. You didn't let me jump in. I was well, really trying to jump in. What do you want to say? Respectfully. I want to ask you a question. I wanted to know your opinion on... Uh, you said he hasn't signed. Do you, what, why do you think he hasn't signed yet? Why has he not put pen to paper yet? If we don't know that so he has sure, No, we have. We do know. He hasn't officially signed yet. There is no official contract paperwork signed right now. Um, and you said that you're almost positive, you're damn near guaranteeing in your opinion that he's going to come in. All right. If he's definitely coming in, why is it taking so long for him to sign? What do you, what do you speculate? What do you think the reason is? Well, he's not going to come in at payback. He's not going to come in at well, no, money in the bank. So what is the rush to get, you know, I, I, they've already got him for a network. Uh, they've already got him for the DVD. Well, the network, you didn't those, make, those deals you didn't already, make money off the network. The DVD, if, he's do, if they're doing a DVD on him, that's a shared profit thing where any profits earned off of it. So bring him in at that so, point. All right, that's my point. If they've agreed to do a DVD and they're willing to market the, the video content they have in the archives on Sting... Market it and make money off of it. We get this percentage. Sting gets this percentage. If they're willing to do a project that makes Sting money, right. and they're going to promote his likeness, his character, his history, this and that. If they're going to do all that and really revive who he is to the current wrestling landscape, the wrestling audience, why wouldn't he be signing already? Why wouldn't he be part of it so that at least, all right, we've got this guy under contract. Now let's really promote him because he worked for us. As opposed to let's really promote a guy that might not even ever work for us, and we what make is, him we make him an even bigger star, and then he takes that rub and goes somewhere with it before we get him locked into a deal. What why, is there why to it, promote right now when the DVD hasn't even been released? Why would you bring no, no, this no. thing in right now? Uh, they are you, doing a DVD though, and, and obviously right? they're going to promote it. My point is, why even do a DVD? Why promote it? Why revive his career to your audience yeah. if you're not a hundred percent sure? He's coming in, and even if he's not going to do a match, at least we know he works for us, he's under contract, he's part of our company. So yeah, let's all absolutely promote who he is to our audience. But why promote it if you're not even sure if he's going to work for you for sure? Who's to say? I mean, you you seem very confident that Sting has officially not signed a WWE. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, Sting, Vince McMahon, and probably Triple H are the only three people that know no, no, no. if Sting has signed a WWE deal. He may be under contract. No, no, no. We're, we're, if there was a contract know? signed, people would have to know because you have different departments that would handle, like your lawyers would have to look over the great. Like, there's other people that would be aware of it and we would have caught wind if an official pen to paper had happened. Unless it was a situation like, all right, we just had this guy sign a contract. He's going to debut this Sunday. Let's keep it quiet so a limited amount of people need to know about it. No, that's not what's happening. He's signing a deal to where even if he did sign already, he ain't debuting as far as a match until this time next year. Probably WrestleMania next year, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So all right. So they wouldn't keep it a secret for a year. They wouldn't even be able to. People, if word would get out. Yo, there's official document that your lawyers need to know about. Your legal team needs to know about. Your executive team needs to know about. Your marketing team needs to know. Yo, in August we need you to start promoting this, or in, in March of next year we need this. 
that stuff so planned out in advance that different departments, different people would know about it. The word would get out if we knew he signed there's, a fucking there's, contract. There's, you know, confidentiality. I mean, look at the, uh, this is a bad example, but look at the uh, the Kardashian wedding to Kanye West that they had this yeah. weekend. Everybody signed it non-disclosure. But that's uh, a very non- private, personal, intimate thing. We're talking about business, not personal. We're talking about business. The people, sign non- con- uh, people sign confidentiality agreements on, like, uh, if you're doing, if you're part of a CD, like Little Wayne CD, and then it gets leaked anyway. It, if people find out, you know, right, and right, that's a right, whole yeah. product getting put to the public. Well, we're just talking agreement. about the information of has this guy signed. It's not that tightly kept a secret, right. like the CM Punk thing at all. To where if it had happened, enough people would know that somebody would be tipped off. Somebody would find out. My whole question was why? All right, let's say let's say he has signed. Why would they be keeping it a secret? What's the, where's the benefit? Well, there's uh, there's no uh, if if they're not going to let, let's just say that they verbally agreed to terms on a deal. That's for, what I heard for next uh, for next yeah, year's WrestleMania. They verbally agreed. They verbally agreed. And that's so why they're he's, doing, he's the doing the network yes. and he's doing the DVDs right now. That was agreed. what I was asking. Right, right. and then yeah. next year's WrestleMania comes around, you can put pen to paper. At that point. But if you've got a verbal agreement and they feel that it's solid enough, well, you can sign something called a on, deal memo where you're basically right. agreeing to sign, but you haven't signed yet. So they know, all right, well, he's committed. Right, right. On you know legally, and that that may be signed. it. That may be it. Uh, it was very close. You know, it was very close yeah. as of a couple. I mean, of weeks we were ago, even told that at are, one point it was done. Things already talking about you know thirty one being the favorite number, and of course that could have yeah. just been a tease with the video and everything else. But it seems to me that I would say, and and you know. We'll get into next year, but I would say at next year's WrestleMania 31, I think we're going to see Sting at WrestleMania I hope 31. So. We'll I see hope what happens. Right. Or if the DVD comes out this summer, I don't know that they would have him at SummerSlam. No, no, no. Anyway, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't seem, you know. So I mean, Sting's located in. They need in, a big attraction. Yeah, and he's California based. Well, they've, they've got the big attractions for WrestleMania. I mean, they're yeah, they're what always going to bring guys. They could bring Goldberg in. Goldberg's well, open to yeah. a match. They, they could also bring Sting in. in. I'm saying, what's Austin? the guaranteed? Uh, draw. I'm just saying in Los Angeles, you know, Sting lives in L.A. We know yeah. SummerSlam's in L.A. What's the big attraction for SummerSlam this year? Well, there they're, not, they're in Santa Clara, California, and Sting is from California. What better way, you know, and not only that, but come the fall, WWE Network numbers, talking about those possibly dropping with subs- uh, the uh, initial six-month subscription, yeah. dropping. What better way than to say, hey, Sting's going to be at SummerSlam. Uh, order the network to find out, and then they get you know views that I mean you never know. Yeah. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, fellas? How you doing, man? Good, good. Hey, um, two quick things for you, Ryan. Um, the Daniel Bryan thing at Payback that also included where Stephanie said if he doesn't turn over the belt, that Bree would be fired too. She, he said she said that on Raw, so he had the choice. He can either turn over the belt or Bree would be fired. Yeah, that's a good um, point. Good point. Do you have to mention that? And um, and um, were you guys as tired of, of seeing the ending on Raw as I was with again the Evolution and Shield? We've seen that so many times now already. I know you're trying, but it's like uh, again another beat down. Another, it's like okay, we understand, but it's like what the third week in a row where it ended like that. Like we've seen that. Like couldn't you come up? I mean, I'm just saying. I know they're pushing it, but it was just like uh, again, we know what's going to happen and. It's not just because Evolution got the lead last night, and it would have been the same thing if the Shield. It's just like, oh, uh, again, okay, Roman Reigns goes through a table. It's like, oh, uh, what, what did you guys think about that? Did you guys think it's too much, too, or was that just the way they were going with it? Yeah, it just seemed to me like, you know, he's talking about the same thing, man. We see it every week, Evolution, same. Evolution Shield, it's a beatdown, you know, they, they face off. Yeah. I mean, listen, it was the go-home show for Payback. We've got a rematch between the two teams, God. so it made sense to... to you know, call, by the way. all hell breaks loose. A big melee breaks loose at, at the end of Raw to build up to the go home show, or to build up to payback this uh, this Sunday night. But yeah, we've seen it time and time again. And I even said to you last night, the crowd at the end of Raw last night, there was a point there. I mean, they 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 got hot towards the end, but during the whole beatdown, the crowd was like silent. Hold on one second. The crowd was you know basically silent for, yeah. for a brief moment, you know, and you're like, wow, man. And I think that's the real, I mean, they've seen it time and time and time again. Caller, you're live on WZR-TV, what's going on? Yeah, on, the, um, on SmackDown going live, what, um, what would happen to main event then? No, they're because, not gonna, um, they're not gonna take SmackDown live, bro. Yeah, I mean, did. What would happen yeah, to event? what would I, happen I, to they do take take SmackDown live, I think the perfect day to debut it live would be August 26th on Tuesday because that's the day that's the day 
15 years of the day, the series debuted. Tajiri's debut? The series debuted. Oh, the series like debuted. debuted on, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, look, August sixteenth. I thought you said yeah. so, that's what's No, you, you know what, dude? I mean, I mean, listen. The the, the <laughs> talk with WWE SmackDown going live. It was part of when they were negotiating. We got a lot of phone yeah, calls. Yeah, we got to stop. When they on. when they were negotiating, um, when they were negotiating the rights to their new their new TV deal, yeah. part of the selling point, like we talked about earlier, was we could move SmackDown to Tuesday nights and take it live. Yes. Okay, it would air on a different night. If they were, we if would that go was going to result in a bunch of extra. Dough because of the DVR right. blah, blah, blah. they were willing to do it, but apparently they didn't want it. That Just bad. because, uh, you know, like Boone said, with the DVR stuff and the advertisers, you know, watching a live show, they're they're more apt, you know, not to skip through the commercials. So there was talk of well, they're more apt not down. to tape it and watch it later. Like, no, it's a live right. show. It's we gotta watch show. it as it's happening. Yeah, like right, sport, right, like basketball. Now know? that the TV deal has been signed and we're good to go, there's no more talk of moving SmackDown to TV. That's not to say that it couldn't happen in the future. Um, if they were to they talk toyed to around side, it in the past, they've toyed with it, but now it's that never the deal, made a difference ratings wise. So the additional expense for production doesn't offset to get the it ratings doesn't. you get, right. and the fact. They didn't get any extra money out of NBC Universal with it. It's, that means they're not doing it. They're not going to move. I mean, they didn't, <coughs> like Boone said, they didn't get any extra money from exactly. NBC Universal. If they so did, we'd be having a different discussion. Right. Right, now. right. Absolutely. So there's. I mean, they're they're not. Uh, they're not we moving back on live. Man. No, go ahead. Keep All taking. All right. Them, we got payback. Keep and taking. Them. We've only got uh, one uh, open phone line, guys. So if you guys don't get through on the first time, just keep calling back five one eight seven one two three zero seven zero five one eight seven one two three zero seven zero. You're back. Caller, you're live. What's up? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? He's new. Yes, what's the latest on Sting? Is he coming in or not? What do you think's going to happen with Sting? Oh, man, we just talked about that <laughs> five, ten minutes uh, ago, I'm man. I'm sorry. We just talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Yeah, I mean, listen to the archive. It'll be up on uh, YouTube.com slash WZR Archive. Archive, right. Tomorrow. Right. It'll yeah, be it'll be, it'll yeah, be up there tomorrow. We just did a ten-minute thing on it. We're man. putting them up on the, uh, on the main websites as well. All right. Back to Raw, we're just going to get through the high points and the low points, guys, because all you guys saw Raw last night, and then we're going to do uh, Rapid Fire. we got about 30 minutes left to get through Rapid Fire we and the rest of Monday Night Raw. Payback predictions as uh, as well. So we'll get through it real quick here. Uh, by the way, we're going to be taking live phone calls for the next half hour as well, 518-712-3070. Bray Wyatt has a message. Next time I get message. going, when you throw it to me, yeah. start looking up a payback card, like when gotcha. I'm doing a rant next. But gotcha. uh, yeah, so Bray Wyatt... Talk about it, man. Bray well, I don't really remember. Uh, Set it up a little bit. You got right. the card right uh, Bray comes out and uh, basically cuts one of these promos. You know, he starts it out by singing. He got the whole yeah. world in his hands, and he says he wants well, to talk. The Lawler stuff. He okay, wants to yeah. talk to Jerry the King Lawler, right? And he asked him to come into the ring. Yeah, but Jerry Lawler, Lawler, Lawler refused, and then uh, so he basically sends Harper and Rowan out to go fetch him, go get him. Go get him. Uh, yeah, and they eventually bring him in, and uh, I think JBL tried to stand up and defend JBL him. JBL did stand up, right? And he took his own clothesline from hell, which was funny, because that's JBL's move. He took that from Luke Harper, who does a good clothesline from hell type spot. Right. Uh, so they took JBL out, and then, all right, finally, long story short, they get jo Jerry Lawler in the ring. Uh, and then Bray is, has him, what, sit on a chair, and then, what does he do with him? I don't even really remember. I know... As far as the JBL part, while you're finishing up getting the payback, right, 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 didn't even get it. But uh, yeah, well, there's no for me to keep killing time. Well, Bray, Bray was about to give uh, Jerry the uh, the sister Abigail, and then two children from the back uh, ran out to the ring. Right? I thought the scene came out here. No, two kids came out to uh, to the ring. I didn't catch that. And at all. Okay. Uh, they, well, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be kids, but they were. They, it was the Usos. Was the Uso oh yeah, as I say, Usos and Cena came out during this. Uso, yeah, U all right. Usos no, no, came no, out. Usos about? came out, and then Cena came out with them. Two kids and made out, right? no, 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 okay, no, no. Yeah. the the report. It was a joke. Says, it there. was a joke yeah, yeah. in your report, dude. All right. So, anyways, uh, the Usos and Cena come out to make the save for Jerry Lawler. They're about yeah. Bray Wyatt and the whole family is about to beat down uh, Jerry Lawler. Exactly. And, and they're uh, in Tennessee, Cena. so they're getting heat for it. Right, They right. get the cheers. Cena and Usos get the cheers for making the save for the hometown guy. Right. And JBL, when they come back from the break, JBL, they've oh. taken him out. He's in yeah. the back. He stays out of match or two to sell, getting hurt. Right. But then he comes back like nothing was wrong. Right. Know. All right. We've got, uh, we've got the WWE payback. Uh, we're going to give you guys predictions here in just a little bit. Uh, Zack Ryder. Uh, comes out as 
was uh, that was interesting to see was Zach weird, Ryder. right? Yeah, but then you find out why two seconds later. Yeah, when got job. Lana is cutting a promo. And you're like, oh, he's the next guy to get squashed. By right, Rusev. right. Mister America, right? I Mr. Think America had comes out. Mister America, you mean Rusev? Rusev. As oh, is that your joke? No, it was Mister America. This was uh, uh, That's somebody came, somebody came out as Mister America, dude. No. What am I missing? Somebody Another came joke. out. No, it was Sandow. Somebody was Sandow. Sandow came out as Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett. That's what it was. All right, nothing to do with this. Yeah, right. to do with this. Came out as Davy Crockett. Yeah, that's you're what getting it was. thrown away by jokes I put in there. All right, but uh, and I, I guess I'll take credit. I, yeah, I did, listen, I'll take the blame for Damian, the jokes in my report. here. Damian Sandow came out dressed up. So I called show. Davy Crockett Mister America. Put that as fuck yeah, out right. of here. But anyways, yes, yeah. It was Zack Ryder against Rusev and Ryder. Rusev squashed him. I think Big E made a run in at the end of the match, right? Yes. I didn't joke about it. I think he's in there, right? Yes. Okay, yes. So they had Big E make the save, but then uh, I think Rusev. Did Rusev Takes the American up? flag because Rusev came out. Rusev, or Zack Ryder came out with an American flag, right? And then Rusev destroys Ryder. Ryder jobs out just to make uh, Rusev look stronger. Big E comes out yeah, to make the Memorial save. It was Memorial Day. Ryder had the American flag. Right. Big E comes out to make the save, grab the American flag, and waved it around. So it looks like they're going to do Big E against Rusev. Two big guys. Payback. Makes yeah. sense, right? Probably. And there's been payback. talk of a new nation of domination. I know. With I, know. B, I wrote a great column about it. Uh, not the two mile horn. I wrote a great column about it. Big E. It'd be Big E, Kofi Kingston. Mark Henry. Mark Henry, R Truth, Xavier Woods. That's who. Okay. Yeah, I All said right. Kofi okay. Kingston, right? Yeah, so those yeah. guys. We had uh, Goldust and Cody Rhodes against the team of Batista and Randy Orton. There was a backstage segment earlier in the show yes. where these guys confronted each other. Um, yeah, Evolution and, and the Brotherhood. And then uh, that led to this tag match, and I think they changed it to a handicap match. during, Or not the tag match. It led to a, uh, I thought it was a one-on-one. No, it was uh, Cody Rhodes and Cody Rhodes and Goldust against Batista and Randy Orton. Uh, Cody Rhodes took two... RKO's from Randy Orton. I can so swear Cody. that started off as just Cody versus, and then they changed it in the middle of the match to uh, to, mm. to the either a handicap or a tag. Either it's not important. Either way, okay. Evolution wins, beats him up. Evolution wins. You knew that Evolution was going to win. Going into payback on uh, on Sunday, so we had uh, let's JBL see. JBL comes back. Then we get Bo Dallas's Raw debut. Oh God! Against Sin Cara. We didn't even Bo Dallas. Bro. I was going to say Adam Rose. The jury's still out. He Man. might. Plummet soon and not really get over. Right. He has at least a chance. I watched, but I didn't watch SmackDown, so this was my debut for Bo Dallas. The first time I seen him on the main roster, unless you count the sporadic appearances a couple years ago. This was the first real debut with his character and all that. He ain't getting over. He ain't getting over, ain't right? Getting over. <laughs> I watched. Okay, here's that dude's gonna be a jobber within two weeks. Bro, He's gonna be on, a nobody on Friday. He'll be Davy uh, Crockett in a year from now. Yeah, you know, or Mr. America. <laughs> Mr. Whatever. America. I was yeah. gonna say. No, but uh, listen. Last uh, last Friday during the or was it Thursday or Friday? It was one of the uh, one of the things, I don't know what but, uh, about So, anyways, an unedited version of WWE uh, yes, SmackDown yeah. comes out. Well, right? It had to have been before Friday. It was before the show. I think it was Friday. I want to say Friday morning or Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Thursday. I afternoon. think it was before the show, and then yeah. it, it got it became a big story on Friday morning. Right. Right. It was That's, out Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I watched it on uh, on Thursday, right? Because I wanted to hear, you know, basically what it was. It was there's some interesting shit in there. Like, you hear there Vince was. producing Cole. Vince and Kevin Dunn yeah. were on uh, the headsets. Producing I mean, the announcers. It wasn't nearly as much as what they do, but there were certain moments. I mean, it was pretty you much... You get a feel for it. Right. It was pretty yeah. much your normal SmackDown broadcast, but at certain points, you could hear the producers. Uh, and Off they the are... the headsets. The, the, for the entire two hours, they are constantly in the headsets. <laughs> so, even with the could unedited version... Oh, I couldn't do it. Me interrupting you every fucking two you minutes. You can't take the dogs or Jacob. No, and I'm just typing. I'm not talking <laughs> to a live audience. Yeah. But every time the door, we're on here live. That too, yeah. And, and that's every way the hell door. away, not right in my ear. Yeah, yeah, somebody's right in your ear telling and you. And that's just noise, not somebody trying. And you are you have to listen. Yeah. You can't just be like, oh, I hear noise in there. No, they're telling you something. you got to listen to it, interpret it, process <laughs> you, it, do what they're saying. You but might last 30 talking. seconds. No, I just, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Dude, I used to work drive through at Arby's, you the only job I ever had. And uh, the manager was a friend of mine. I actually watched him having a fair and his wife with this black chick in a pool. <laughs> we would hang out with him. He was so fucking cool. But uh, he 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 knew I had a short. People who know me know I got a short yeah, temper. I can yeah. flip the fuck out over. Absolutely. Right. So I'm working. They had it on drive through. I was uh, this was before I was.
was 18, I wasn't old enough to use a slicer to cut the roast beef at Arby's. Right. So it was either the front <laughs> register or drive through and, and very rarely they put me on drive through because they knew I had a short temper. And mm. if you're sitting there and you wear that fucking headset for drive through beep, 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 you're beep, dealing beep, with somebody beep, at the beep, window. Beep, oh, yeah, here, money, change, here's yeah. your drinks. And yeah. then, you hear the fucking thing in your headset, and you're all, shit, someone's at the, the menu. Hi, ah, yes, you're <coughs> aware. And then the lady at the window starts yelling at you, and the guy's talking in your ear. Hold on, uh, shut yeah, the fuck shut up. up. I would, shut up. I would yell at the customers. <laughs> and the manager, Kyle, Kevin, he said, dude, you can't. <laughs> you can't yell at the cu- You can't tell the customer shut the fuck up or, you know, whatever you're doing. I've heard this story you can't before. You can't do it, man. <laughs> so he would set up a bunch of, you know, they have french fries and potatoes and stuff. He'd and set up the cardboard beer. boxes. And they would come in these big boxes and he would set up a bunch of boxes at the back door where you'd go out to smoke or take the trash out. And he'd but. say, listen, the next time you get mad, because he could hear, because he's got a headset on too and he could take over if he wants. Right. He said, the next time you get mad, because you could intercom him. Wouldn't talk to the menu or the people right. at the window. Right, you just, just talk directly to him. Right. He says the next time you think you're about to lose it and yell at a customer, just ring me. Yeah. I'll come take over the window. You go you back go to, to the these back. Boxes. <laughs> you go kick the shit out of them boxes and get all your anger out, and then come back and do it. So that's that's. But yeah. yeah so yeah. I could not do a live three-hour TV show and have somebody blast no. yelling at me in you my ear. You wouldn't last thirty seconds. I would get fired. You wouldn't in two last seconds. thirty seconds. Yeah, two I, seconds. Yeah, man. In the middle of the show, I'd get fired in the middle of the show. I know. You you would do it. Go close line from Hallahan. <laughs> Injury angle, get him the fuck out of there. Yeah. You couldn't do it, man. Yeah, no you way. You couldn't do it. Uh, what else? We had, uh, what was it? Oh, Danny Bryan. This the is Dan- the whole Danny yeah. Bryan stuff, man. Oh, uh, yeah, since we're rushing, basically, I mean, we talked about this already. We already talked about yeah, it. Yeah, he, he, he said, I'm going to tell you a word you don't hear often, Stephanie, no. No. Uh, and then, like the caller said, Stephanie said, you either give me the titles at payback or we fire your wife. Is or that I'm taking it. it. Yeah, you either give me, okay. you either come to payback, I'm going to give you. So one of the other happening. One of the others is happening. He's either going to give the titles or to Brie her, gets fired. or Brie Bella gets fired. 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 Yeah. Yes. So the, we got Matt versus I, Hair. I think you got you got two matches, or not? A, I guess it's not a match. Brian and Brie. Two gimmicks going into Sunday, where you're guaranteed one or the other. Either El Torito loses his mask, Hornswoggle shaves his head. I'm assuming Hornswoggle shaving his head. Well, Hornswoggle, um, they're going to make a joke out of yeah, that. Yeah, and then so you guarantee either a mask comes off or somebody gets their head shaved. So there's A, and that's a pre-show. You know B, Hornswoggle's getting the head shaved. B, right? either okay. Brian gives up the titles or Brie gets fired. That One of those two things is happening. I think they're going to somehow set up Brie versus Stephanie McMahon. As somebody talked about, a really? caller said that. What do you think? I'm well. I'm asking you. Do you think they would do that? I think they may. I don't think they'd put her back in the ring. Stephanie, yeah, they could. They, I know. They I know. could, but I don't seem, see it happening. Does seem weird. All right. Um. What else? Alicia Fox. This is where she had uh, what another meltdown. She, is, right? she does the thing now where she loses and then flips out. Emma I Jesus. like how Kurt, uh, Stone Cold was beers. Boom. Right. Kurt Angle was milk. Boom. Alicia yeah. Fox. Coca Cola Classic. Boom, bam. <laughs> Sticky Coke all over. So, uh, she looks Emma. so good, too. Yeah, Alicia is she hot. She's the prettiest right? eyes yeah, ever. Man. Yeah. yeah, man. Alicia's a hot black chick. Here's Mr. Hot. America. Here's Mr. America yeah. or Davy Crockett, yeah. whatever you want. Uh, Emma defeated Alicia Fox and then she yes. flipped out. We talked about that. All right. Later. So uh, Adam Rose and Davy Crockett comes out, right? Of course, it's Damian Sandow. He's dressed up, right? That poor son of a bitch, man. Who did he piss know, off? Right. He's That's Davy something. Crockett jobbing to Adam Rose the second. And match. who was he with Hugh Jackman? He was doing the whole gimmick a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and the one week he came out and he cut a promo and like Big Show just stood there and waved, him out, waved right? and just knocked them out. Yeah. Yeah. He don't get yeah. TV entrance. Is no more. He's yeah, it's crazy. Shows. And then Adam Rose picked it. Adam Rose defeated him. And he's jobbing yes, the Rose more. in his second match. Like he's right? that guy now. So Adam Rose. Uh, I was the, battling for the title when the year started. Hey, you know the lemon every week is uh, Norman be Smiley. Lemon. Don't be a rosebud. Be or don't be a lemon. Be a rose. It's Norman bud. Smiley. Dude, that's so funny you brought that up. I was just thinking about his. Do you remember his W Stubby? Norman Smiley. Do you remember his, that? Do you remember his W Stubby gimmick? Not the worm. Remember the worm. Or not the worm. I, uh, I forget him. what it was called, but he I can't like, Oh, the in, big wiggle in Disco Inferno. Did. But he yeah. was the big wiggle. But my favorite Norman Smiley thing was when Russo took over WCW. We could talk. That's coming about up. It. Yeah, yeah. Ask him about it. He made him screaming Norman Smiley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Norman would get scared. Like big say, they'd say, "And hey, Norman, your opponent tonight is Scott Steiner." Scott Steiner walks out like a yeah. fucking truck. Yeah. And Norman's thing was he'd go, he'd curl down in the fetal position, grab the ropes, <laughs> and <he'd> start screaming. <laughs> He was just screaming, screaming because he was scared and shit. It was so awesome. fucking funny, man. I, awesome. I love that gimmick. That's awesome. I think it was a very underrated comedy gimmick. I mean, yeah. the, the guy would get booked against big monsters, 
and they'd come out, and then they, it, it, uh, the, the character progressed into this. He's gonna wear big fucking football pad shoulders, a big <laughs> right. football helmet, and still be screaming and running and hiding. And right, it right. was just funny shit. Man. Uh, Norman's like, down working in uh, developmental. He's, he's been a, a uh, training, trainer. Yeah, right. he's been a trainer for years for right. WWE. I don't right. think he ever worked in WWE either, as far as a. As far TV as an in-ring type, a real, power, real right? regular right. character. Yeah, we had uh, Sheamus and Del Rio. Um, Sheamus uh, defeated Del Rio with the uh, the bro kick, right? I believe it was the bro kick. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Um, let's see. We had Cesaro came out there um, as well, right? I believe Cesaro. The Cesaro running. Paul Heyman. Paul I think Heyman was the match. He did the handshake thing where mm-hmm. like you beat him down and then shook his hand while he was unconscious or something. Something like that. No, they did that the previous week, and then Sheamus did it back to him on SmackDown. Last okay. night, I don't know what they did. Not important. Okay. Anyways, contract signing. Yeah. Uh, Monday Night Raw. To end, this was uh, the main event. They hyped it up. WWE the day. is a creative genius. Oh, Jesus. Anybody in the world? Blah, blah, what was the question? I don't yeah. have the... Uh, I, I would pull it up, but it would take, uh, yeah, take a couple... But anyway, it, it's on the it website. On the like, how funny was that, dude? Yeah, right yeah, at yeah. the very bottom of the contract. Um, I, I Listen, the caller brought it up earlier. This led to... I mean, I thought it was cool because normally contract signings, every time, dude, you have them come out, right? Pen to paper, and then a brawl breaks down. Before the contract uh, signing started, you've got Roman Reigns taking the chair, tossing it out of the ring, taking the table, yeah. tossing it out of... Basically, like, saying, fuck this. You know what I'm out here. Here. We're fighting. Come out of here, and let's fight. And that's basically the whole gist of the uh, the yeah. angle was... Get this shit out of the ring. We come down and, and let's fight right yeah. now. And uh, eventually they sign the contract. Evolution winds up coming out. Uh, Triple H cuts promo, says, listen. They get the sledgehammer involved. They do the whole beat down thing. You understand if we come down there, you know, we're going to beat your ass. You're going to perish. Yeah. They bring so up the, the show goes off the air with Evolution beating down the shield, basically. So does that mean the shield goes over on something? We'll talk about that. Traditionally, that's what it means. And basically, it's kind of interesting because they already won. They beat him at the last pay per view. I shoot. know, I know. So they're going to beat him twice in a row, which they kind of have to because if a little news note, Batista finished up last night. He did. As far as TV, right. he'll be at obviously he'll be at payback. He'll on be Sunday. at payback, but last night was his. Final yeah, one. I don't know if he's doing SmackDown. I assume he would, uh, but last night was his final Raw for a few months because he's right. taking his hiatus after payback. Correct. But Correct. he was scheduled to take his hiatus after Extreme Rules, and they convinced him. To stay. And they convinced him. So there's to a stay, chance right. he'll convince him to stay too. But as things stand now, last night was his final Raw. So if that's the case, then the Shield really can't lose to a group that the next night's not even going to exist because you need Batista. But we've heard rumors that but they, not only that, we've heard rumors that they're going to add a new member to Evolution too. Yeah, that's so true. So it could stick that's around. True. You never know. Well, and not only that, wow, <coughs> so much rapid fire tonight too. Guys. We're not going to get all oh, man. We we're not. I'm I'm going to warn you guys ahead no of time because we've got a uh, SmackDown and they're being taped in Atlanta, Georgia. If it was anywhere else, uh, you know. On the West Coast, mm-hmm. or even, uh, but we'll skip through and we'll get the uh, the good questions. We took a bunch of phone calls earlier tonight too, guys. Um, real quick, let's give our payback predictions so that we okay. can do that. Yeah, I've got the card up, and it sucks because um, the payback card is not even close to finish. There's like five matches. Run down the payback card. <laughs> you know? I know. So when right, we go to read the right. results on next Tuesday, we're gonna be like, well, we didn't get to pick these three matches because they didn't even announce them yet. Well, you know what? Let's do what we have. Run down the card. Okay. I'm gonna grab a pen. All right. But give them the matches, and then we'll come back and go through. All right. So real quick, here's the lineup officially. Now we know a couple of rumored matches. Maybe okay. as we're going through this here, I'll be able to to uh, just rip a piece of cardboard or something. Uh, but uh, nah, 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 off the box here, not the oh. food. I need to keep it fresh. Oh, nice book. yeah. Um. He's going to get paper. But, uh, all right, anyways, this Sunday's WWE Payback, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, main event, the Shield versus Evolution. No holds barred elimination match. We've got a last man standing match between John Cena and Bray Wyatt. We've got the U.S. strap, Sheamus defending against Cesaro. The IC strap, Bad News Barrett defending against Rob Van Dam. The Diva strap with Paige defending against Alicia Fox. And then the pre-show match, uh, which is Hair versus Mask. Horn Swoggle versus L. Tori. All right, so those are confirmed. There's a couple of rumor matches like Rusev, Biggie. We can do those anyway. All right, no doubt. Yeah, in case. Um, and I can't think of the other one. That's really we'll do them both, just like you said, just in case. Yeah. Uh, they do you get know the other rumor one? I can't think of the rumor one. See, if you would have got my post, I had the rumored ones too. Oh, I'm sorry. But uh, anyways, anyways, all right, let's, let's uh, see what we can do here. Let's. Go from the uh, the bottom up. I gotta go. Hornswoggle against uh, El Torito. Mask against Hair Match. Going El Torito as the winner. 
Ah, uh, as the winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's right. We're picking that. I think Horny's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Horny's getting his head shaved. I think. I mean, listen, it's a joke. You can just imagine. Leprechaun's dude. done. They don't need him. For, maybe that was, exactly. Well, has it been released yet, Leprechaun? Because what, Leprechaun. Leprechaun. what if Leprechaun Origins, the movie that Horny's talking about? Oh. No, I don't. It, it, I, they might need him for reshoots. It might be hard. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. I'm, still going up I'm, sure, I'm sure that they've already done the they reshoots the and everything camp. else. Right. right. Absolutely. All right. So we're uh, we're both gonna take El Torito on uh, on that. We think uh, Hornswoggle, like Boone said, is gonna get the uh, the head shaved. Makes sense. Next dude. up, we get the Divas Championship. Paige defending against Alicia. Fox. Now, I, that's an interesting I gotta say, man, I mean, it seems like with the current angle that they're doing with Alicia Fox, normally, let's be honest, man, they don't do much with the Divas division, yeah. but it seems like as of late, like last night on Raw, we had two Divas matches. If any Diva gets a character, you know they're doing something with them, because Absolutely. pretty much every Diva is just a faceless, nameless piece of ass that has a match that doesn't mean shit right. on a card, right. uh, but to get an actual personality and a specific character where you're not just a fucking... Sideshow jerk off like uh like Summer Ray or mm-hmm. uh, or Lena or uh, Lena um Emma would be the perfect example. Right. Isn't it funny that the two divas that are in the divas title match are not featured on Total Divas? You you would think that they would try to showcase the Total Divas talents. Yeah. Uh, to give a storyline. Well, they on were TV. with Naomi, and then she got her fucking eye right. cracked. That's true. But uh, That's true. all right, so I'll go with um. I'm gonna go with Paige. Honestly. You're gonna go Paige? Yeah. Because I figure a Fox's gimmick is she loses and freaks out, so she'll lose and freak out. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that yeah. as well, man. I gotta go Alicia Fox. I should make you pick first now. I think you hear my explanations and you're like, oh, that makes sense. He's right. Let me go. With I was him. thinking about going. You were uh, gonna go with Fox. God damn it! I should have made you pick first. I just wrote down Alicia Fox for See? both of us. <laughs> damn it! All right, we're gonna go uh, Paige. There. What's yeah. next? I see title. Bad news. Barrett. R. B. The, uh, Bad News Barrett and yeah, RVD. Listen, man, Rob Van Dam, we talked about it earlier. He comes and goes here and there. They're not going to give him a run with the title. At least in my opinion, they may and shock us. I could. But, you know, yeah. uh, I got to go uh, Bad News Barrett here. I'm agreeing. All right. Um, And then we've got the U.S. title, Seamus Cesaro. This one's a tough one to pick, actually. Sheamus and Cesaro. Uh, Sheamus recently won. He the, just won the belt. Just and you, won it. And if you look right at here things, in Albany, New York. And if you look at things, Cesaro's last pay per view match was the finals of the IC title tournament, and he didn't win the title. Mm. And his second pay per view match is going to be against another champion, and he's not going to win that title either. I don't see that happening. Hmm. If he's getting this big push, why would they give Sheamus the title and then take it right back? That's off? the other question. You know what I mean, so they're going to angle out of this somehow, but where they haven't. Where's the angle going? Well, Heyman's, Heyman's alongside, you know, he's got Heyman with him. Yeah, but uh, I'm saying angle out, they're going to start a new program, but yeah. I don't know who that would be. They haven't they teased anything. I'm going to go Sheamus here, man. I'm going to go... Fuck. I'm going to go... Let's, what's the rest of the card? We're both going to agree on the main event. We're both going to agree on that one. Mostly. All right, so we're going to agree on all of them then. All right, I'll take... Are just to disagree with me. All right, no doubt. That's literally my only reason. I'll tell you what, though. That is a 50 50. That could go either way, though. Pick, I gotta be honest with you. Um, all right, what's up next? We've got John Cena against Bray Wyatt in a last man standing match. Um, I gotta be honest with you. I mean, John Cena, Super Cena, always overcomes all the odds, right? Last man standing match. I'm gonna say Cena. Gets up here. Bray's had some stellar, awesome promos uh, for his gimmick in the last couple of weeks. I'm gonna go Cena. I'm thinking you may take Bray though here. I'm gonna go Bray. I was just you gonna go it, Bray. I was just doing it in my head. And my explanation is they worked WrestleMania. Right. Cena won. Cena won. Then they worked Extreme Rules. Bray won with Bray a won. lot of help. Little kid freaks Cena out. Blah, right. Blah, blah, blah. Right. 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 On a technicality, he wins. Right. Uh, so the one and one. And the go home raw saw Cena and the Usos come out, scare off the Wyatt family, right? and True. so they're standing tall. So that usually means they're losing. I'm going to go the Wyatt family. All right, or I mean Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Uh, it okay. wouldn't shock me one bit though if Super Cena, like you said, pulled it off. Yeah. And then the uh, the main event is going to be a no holds barred elimination style matchup: The Shield against yeah. Evolution. Just talked about it. Batista going to be taking time off. Yeah. Evolution is pretty much going to disband uh, after. That's how I understand. Payback. It. Yeah. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, 
you know, with with Triple H and Roman but they Reigns. Did. How they Evolution did that. job at Extreme Rules. They dropped them twice in a row. Yeah, but they're trying. You can clearly tell that they're trying to get the shield That's over. That's the whole point of that, Evolution reuniting right. is to get the shield over. So yeah, I right. say they job again. I I'm going to say they job. Uh, they job twice, and then we'll hear about it. All yeah. right, so. Both uh, taking El Torito. Biggie oh, and Rusev. Just Biggie and Rusev, uh, just in case. It does look like they're going to do that. Yeah. Well, they may well, announce that at the uh, SmackDown. Tag titles. Is the Usos doing anything? No, they haven't set nothing up with them. No, nothing um, with uh, Goldust and Cody Rhodes. Daniel Bryan, do we want to predict if he's surrendering the title or if Bree's getting fired? We want to predict that. I'm going to say there's going to be some sort of angle that's going to play out there where neither neither happens. That's what I'm saying. How can you they know? fire Bree? Yeah. And how can they take the title? They can take the titles off of him. Bree's not, uh, Bree's not going to be off filming anything, right? No, no she's, she's going to be there. And, uh, and Daniel Bryan's They just, could take the strap off Bryan. They could. They could. I think. I think when they get over the weekend and they finally on Sunday, they're going to decide. I don't even think they have to decide one or the other. But I, th- I think on Sunday they are going to make the decision. Okay, you're two. We're two weeks out of surgery. Okay, we're two we're weeks. Star the rapid fire is ten o'clock. I know. Right. Um, we're two weeks out of surgery. We're going to do, do it real quick. Um, all I'll right. Go, uh, Big, I'll go Rusev over Big E. Obviously, I'm going to take Rusev yeah. on that too. All right. That's all I can think of. I can swear there's another match. I'm not. Yeah. Alright, how about it? Rapid fire. We're going to do this in a rapid fire yeah. fashion. Okay? So, here we go. We got a bunch of them. Oh, Adam Rose and Jack Swagger was another one that's possible. Hmm. I got it. I'll take Adam Rose. Yeah, me too. I'll take Adam Rose. He got a big win over, uh, what's his name last night on? Uh, Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett. Yeah. Damon Sanda. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Here we go. You ready? If yes. if the really long guys, we're gonna have skip to skip over. over. You gotta you gotta make sure you gotta make sure that uh, when you guys submit these, try to keep them to like one or two lines, just so that we can kind of fly through rapid fire. You know what I'm saying? All right, uh, Tim Krieger. Do you think we'll ever see another hardcore promotion like ECW? They've tried with Hardcore Road Trip, and I think Tommy Dreamer's promotion has hardcore the best. Hardcore Homecoming shot. is that what it's called? No, no, no. Uh, what the fuck is this? It's House of Hardcore. Uh, House of Hardcore. Uh, and ROH is kind of like used to be a little bit. Not so much hardcore, but like with their real wrestling first kind of mentality. Right, right. Uh, who cares? Uh, Tom Nelson, do you guys think... Who cares? EC fucking nothing, no, bro. No, who cares if another hardcore promotion went around? Gonna, I hope so. It's not going to be anything. So. Tom Nelson... That's not why ECW was awesome, because they were hardcore. There's many reasons they were awesome. Oh. Tom Nelson says... <laughs> Do you guys think the Alicia Fox stuff is as funny as me, and would Sting be a viable option for Raw GM? Thanks. Uh, I'll take your first one first. Do I think Alicia Fox stuff is as funny as you do? No, I think it's just it's, it's stupid. It's I mean, but it's what it is. But it's an angle for the divas. It's something division. for her to do it, right? So yeah, right. but I don't laugh when it happens. It's not like oh, that's so funny. Right. Sting is a viable Raw GM. No. Uh, no, no. I mean, the, the the WWE Universe, they really don't even know Sting unless it you're a long-term... not the greatest talker. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, Paul Blaska is way too long, bro, but I'll skim through. Uh, MVP's talking about uh, the director of Operations Kane, Eric Young with Daniel Bryan and TNA, right? TNA versus WWE. Uh, MVP forms a stable with Kenny King and Lashley. That'd be Evolution. He's it's talking about what we talked about uh, earlier. He gets into a different thing. At the end, he build, it's all a big build-up to, will there ever be competition with WWE? Do you think Global Force or maybe Ring of Honor could step up and be legit competition down the road? I, listen, no. I, if TNA can't do the Spike TV deal, and listen, I they know got, that yeah, the product... a billionaire company, Viacom, back him, and they can't do... I, I know that their product and their creative, it's uh, impact is tough to watch these days. I yeah. understand that. And they got a great still. roster of names. They got, got two hours on primetime cable every week. Right. And they haven't been able to do shit. You've got WWE. After 10 years in the business, no less, too. <laughs> You've got WWE drawing 3.8 <laughs> ratings when they used to draw 6.0s, 7.0s yeah. back in the day. It's just a bad time for pro wrestling now, and I feel like if, if TNA can't, I don't think anybody can. No. It's just a bad time for pro wrestling. you got to just hope that you can make money as a company. Yeah. Don't even think about competing with WWE. Christopher Brown bad says... Time. Which gimmick has the most potential to do long-term damage to its respective wrestler's career? Johnny Curtis as Fondango, Leo Kruger as Adam Rose, or Bo Dallas as this Simon Dean wannabe knockoff? 
That's a good point. He is kind of like that Simon E guy who would do the infomercials with the, the protein powder and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The jumpsuit and everything. Uh, so, who has the most potential? No, who career? has the most long-term damage with a bad gimmick? Like, whose career oh. getting fucked with the most because they got stuck with a shit gimmick? I think Bo Dallas, they've tried twice. Yeah, twice. I'd say Bo Dallas is fucked, and Fondago might be too, because they ever tried yeah. to say, well, let's do something real with him. Everybody's going to be like, no, he's the dancing jerk-off. Right, right, right. You know? Uh, Jay Mullen, are you guys watching NXT TakeOver on Thursday yes. night? Yes, we are. If you've never watched NXT, I recommend you watch the show. It's a great lineup. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an awesome card. Check it out. WWE Network this Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, two-hour show. He says, also, what are your thoughts on the UFC light heavyweight and heavyweight divisions? Besides Junior Dos Santos, is there a force that can dethrone Cain Velasquez, the UFC heavyweight champion? Also, who would win between Cain Velasquez and John Jones? I'd have to go with the Cardio Beast Velasquez, says Jay Mullen. I go um, Velasquez. I think you and I talked about that. Velasquez and Jones? That's a tough one. Um, fuck, man. I don't know. I, I'm I mean, going Velasquez. I would probably go Velasquez, but yeah, I'd probably go Velasquez. John Morgan, how long before Bo Dallas becomes the fourth member of the Shield? Believe in the Shield. Oh, God. I hope not. Never, but I that's funny. Yeah, they said hey, that. you never know. They put Bo Dallas in the Shield, right? Believe in the Shield. I the like gimmicks it. right now don't even I like come it, close though. to matching up. I see where you're going with that, John Morgan. I like it. Yeah, it's I like a cute it. one-liner, Bo leaving the Shield. It's a cute one-liner, but hey, you do a gimmick <coughs> change for Bo Dallas. You take him out of that stupid blah, blah, blah. Well, that put him in the Shield. Brings back to the last guy's put question. Put a vest on him. and it brings you back to the last guy's question. Like he's it. got the long hair and he's looking. But uh, it brings you back to the last guy's question. Does the gimmick fuck up his future? Yeah. Can you put him with the Shield after he's being viewed as this jerky That's fucking true. inspirational That's speaker? AJ Clark says... Me and my voices in my head had a debate about what would make TNA a better wrestling company. So what do you guys think TNA has to do to become a better wrestling company? Ryan Clark's biggest fan. I've got voices in my head. Uh, TNA needs a better creative team. They need to completely overhaul their creative team and uh, just start fresh. Don't even get me started. TNA has no chance to be anything. Yeah. It, uh... Harvey, oh, Italy. Any Whiteley. news on Whiteley? Any news on a Vince McMahon return to TV? Talked about that earlier. Um, as of now, no, no plans for it. But I, I hope. I mean, eventually, obviously, he'll at least appear. Will he be a regular character ever again? A lot of times, I would say yes, but we don't know that. A lot of times, Vince McMahon returns are kind of spur of the moment type things, where if he's backstage at Raw one day, bada bing, bada boom. Arturo Velasquez Jr. said, Did Boone ever talk about the story of Pat Patterson? Which story? I don't know what he's talking about. I wrote that column about is he a good guy for fucking with little boys and shit. And, uh, I don't know what his... I don't think he never got into the actual story about that. No, enough. I did. I talked about the Phil Donahue appearance and I thought we, the we, lawsuit. You briefly mentioned it and we said we're going we're gonna to talk about it next week. There was a specific story I was supposed to tell mm -hmm. that I don't remember what he's... I don't know what it is. All right. I, know I was supposed to do it though. Yeah. Jordan uh, Paul Paveo, do you think WWE will ever do an angle between Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas? They look identical. Because they're brothers? No, they, they look don't. identical. They don't look anything alike. Are you kidding me? They don't look anything alike. I'm going to get a side by side. Bo Dallas, the Bo Dallas and Mika Are Rotunda, you his sister, yeah. they look identical. Bo Dallas and Bray Wyatt look no, identical. I'll get a side by side for you. Get a side by side. They don't look alike. They look identical. You can tell they're related. They do not look identical. Not identical, but you can... Do, they, yeah. they got the same face. They don't have the same they face. They got the same face. Braze is fatter. His big beard. This and that. Uh, not the same bro, face. They, they have the, the same kind of family resemblance. They Every got the same has nose. Them. They've got the same eyes. And they're brothers. When I see Bo Dallas, I say, wow, he looks just like Bray. I've only seen Bo Dallas once, and that was Dude. on the roll, so I don't know, but I didn't get like, wow, he looks so much like Bray. They look... You could tell they're related, but it's similar. not like, whoa, he looks just like him. Very similar. Anthony Remy says, is Evolution breaking up after payback? We covered that. I wish we could check the chat. Do you guys think Bo Dallas and uh, Bray Wyatt look uh, similar? Let us they're know in, now the, uh, in, the, in the chat room. Uh, Alex, man, oh, that's uh, way too long here, man. Um, let's see, John Morgan, was there a loser disband stipulation announced for the Shield vs. Evolution match this Sunday that I missed out on from the promo they cut at the ending of Raw? Last night it sounded like they were hyping. No, it's going to be an elimination style uh, match. What are you saying? Does the losing team have to break up the group? Oh. Which would make sense since Evolution was break up. He said they had addressed that at the end of the promo on Raw. I didn't catch that if they did it. A lot of yeses for uh, Bray Wyatt. And, yeah, uh, a lot of people agree with him. All right, no doubt. Uh, where do you leave off? Uh, Vincent Nugent, 
What do you guys think about Bill Goldberg, among the latest pro wrestling personalities, to launch a podcast via podcast1.com, joining the likes of Steve Wells and Chris Jericho, Jim Ross, and Roddy Piper on there, and do you regularly listen to their podcasts as well? Boone does. I I've don't never know. heard Piper's. I very rarely listen to Jericho's. I always listen to Austin's, if he's got a guest, uh, and I've always listened to JR's. Ah, uh, John Morgan. Oh. Goldberg's. This is the last one from John Morgan. Uh, who will the Shield be feuding with after Evolution? If Evolution disbands, you and Boone have been suggesting a whole new nation of domination feud. Well, I've just been saying Actually, what they've what been think? talking about, and I like that idea. Uh, as far as the Shield's next, they could do the Y family again. I mean, uh, those matches are always pretty good. Yeah, all, almost, almost all of them. And they should have really good. did that at Mania, but. Uh, I think they may do singles, man. Roman Reigns goes off to face Triple H, and then... What the hell was that? That, that happens a lot. Uh, Roman Reigns and Triple H going into SummerSlam, and then take uh, Rollins and uh, Ambrose, the tag feud team. them with you know another tag team. So, for the tag team title. They could, or the, yeah, Maybe like... The Usos. Or uh, like Harper and Rowan. Harper and Rowan, yeah. No doubt. Um, Anthony Remy, will we see The Rock versus Roman Reigns? No. Although... Shit, if that, I mean, if Reigns gets hot enough, Rock's only, he's made it clear, he's only going to return if it's something special, something that feels big, something that feels important, uh, and because they're related, Reigns, if he's really, really over... If he really if takes off over the next oh, year. let me do my cousin a favor. Right. No, right. but if he's monster over and it feels like a real big thing, right. mixed with the fact that they're relatives, and he'd be like, oh, wow, I could come back... And my cousin's like a monster fucking superstar right now. I oh can get him God. even more over. Right, right. I think he might be into something like that. But that just depends on, on how long that takes because Rock's not getting any younger. Yeah. These, uh, look at this. I'm just going to show yeah, you. Well, it just there's no way. It. All right. Grab the, the small ones. We'll just, all right. It's got to be the small ones. <coughs> right, we got to get out of here for uh, WWE SmackDown. They're taping it in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So we'll get out of here. Um, Let's see. Let's see. They're in there having conversations. Yeah, this is a conversation here. What will happen to payback? Will there be a firing or a title match? Uh, that's from we Larry talked Smith. That. Talked about that already. David Hadley, should WWE do a special live three hour 15th anniversary, anniversary <laughs> SmackDown is this, this year? Is this year the 15th anniversary of SmackDown? Is it? I seem to recall it debuting in 2000, 2001. Tuesday, August 26th would be 15 years to date. This is probably the caller so that we Smackdown had earlier. SmackDown came around in 99? It's been around for a long time. I it was 2000 or 2001. All right, 99. Well, the okay. caller earlier brought up uh, August 26th yeah, as well. Yeah, I believe him. Uh, Vincent um, Lewis says, Do you guys really think that would be seriously misutilizing Damien Sandow completely with giving him these stupid, lame comedy characters? Or what do you think? He, or is he trying to have a good impression of WWE Universe and WWE Brass General Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're fucking him up. What do you yeah. Mean? yeah. Uh, Jason Hansen, do you think sometimes talent aren't given a lame gimmick for a certain period, just to see how they are? They are given a lame gimmick. Uh, just to see how they react yeah. to it. And they handle being, go. yeah. Um, I mean, they did that with the Red Rooster and Dusty Rose, and they try to humble guys. Which guys that were, like, against them for so long or something like that, and not that, that Terry Taylor would fall in, Dusty Rose would. He was, you know like, what? the guy in WCW. If you're given a lame gimmick, and you get it over, it's only going to make you look better, but there are some gimmicks... That just ain't going to get over. Well, there's two <laughs> examples. They gave Bad News Bear a lame gimmick. He got it over and made a fucking there you go. big breakout thing almost. Right. Right. They gave Damien Sandow a lame gimmick. He made it work, and they still shut him down. They still shut him so down. You exactly. never really know. And Bo Dallas, they gave him that first gimmick when he first came up. He didn't have a gimmick. Had him in the a, Royal Rumble. He was, yeah, he was he's just, just a guy. NXT guy. Yeah, right, he's just right. a guy. Now he's a character. Now he's a character, and I got... Uh, David, I'm afraid I've got some bad news yeah. for both. David Hadley says, Alicia Fox didn't have a regular Coca-Cola. She had a sun-kissed orange and a Diet Coke. Well, either way, it was soda. Sticky soda. Yeah. There you go. Who's up next? Allie. Man, what do we got? Allie, uh, do you see Sandow being built into a possible work shoot storyline with Dolph and Miz down the line? Would sure as hell be cool as feck. Cool as feck. Uh, no, I don't see that happening. Cool as feck, man. It's an idea for three guys that could use an idea. Uh, we skipped a couple up here. Let's see. Vincent had one more at the bottom there. Then he will take that here in a second. Uh, right. What do we got? Well, will end it with Nugent. Vincent Nugent. Acer closes out the rapid fire for this week, and he says, Do you guys think the second live NXT special event, NXT TakeOver, will be even better than the first live NXT special, NXT Arrival, 
And will NXT TakeOver be even better than WWE Payback? We love you some NXT, brother. Uh, will Payback, will, be, will TakeOver be better than Payback? Could be. Uh, TakeOver seems to be a really good match show, match quality, man. like when you, yeah. when you turn it on and turn it off, like I said about Raw, yeah. when you turn off TakeOver, you're going to be like, damn, that was a good show. Yeah. You're almost guaranteed it. Uh-huh. When you turn off Payback, there's no guarantee that it's going to be like, damn, that was a good show. Right. Now, Shield Evolution should be great. Mm. Uh, what's the card here? Shield Evolution should be great. Fucking uh, Barrett RVD should be great. Cesaro uh, uh Sheamus should be great. Uh, you know what I mean? So there's there's great matches. It's on there. it's. I mean, Payback's a pretty good show, man. Um, we'll no see. I, think, I think El Torito and Hornswog were going to tear it down again <laughs> on the pre-show, right? They're they always fun. Kill, they fucking killed it on the pre-show. Ed, they uh, were. They might have been the best match of the night on that right? pre-show. It was yeah. fucking awesome. All right, brother. We are out of here. I thought our numero uno was a little bit better than our numero There you go with the self-review. Let them tell us with the feedback. How can they send us feedback? Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR or Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Both of us, we're going to put a feedback post up. Let us know what you thought. Sorry for rushing through the uh, rapid fire tonight. It's just there's a lot of work that we got to do when we get out of here. Smackdown being taped from Atlanta. Yeah. So we're going to get out of here. We're going to take down this. Not only that, but it takes a good 15, 20 minutes to take yes, down this does. set <laughs> after we go off the air. So we're going to put the feedback post up. Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Uh, we're out of here. We'll see you guys next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern time. Enjoy WWE Payback this Sunday night and NXT TakeOver on Thursday night. We're out of here. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. For Matt Boone. That's me. Ryan Clark. Let's see you next Tuesday night. Payback review. Monday Night Raw review. All the news from the past week. WZROnline.com. We out.